trickery, trickery. I know you sick of me, but you a guy's enemy. If you live wickedly, don't be an idiot. Follow for trickery, most I has had enough. Call all the deacons up, and all of the captains. It's time to get out there. We never react there. We swing in the action. Cause you running out of time. Uh, yeah, you running out of time. Across the seas, 144,000. We deep like a pool, man. We digging. You constantly sleep, so everyone go and come gather around me. Can't you see how we move? Tribe of Judah, too smooth. From coast to coast, making moves. We the action apostles, yeah, they try to stop us. They ain't even want us catch the boat. I, I, I know it's coming, yeah, that day is coming. Can't wait till my hands cross this throat. Time, time is ticking. Pestilence, they stricken. The end time is wrapping up. All aboard, we dripping. It's the perfect timing. Word more than the worth of diamonds on this earth is shining. We've been given power. One left, the 11th hour to the word of our. I'm just singing the past song. The state of this kingdom won't last long. So how do you figure the time you got left when it's already 10 and a half gone? I'm in rhythm. Never prone to a schism. On this throne, that's wisdom. On the scene, that's vision. It's in our jeans, no denim. I'm on the team that's winning. Know that we taking this globe. We on a quest to wake Jacob up next and that's rather by plane or by boat. Ironic how easy we making the coast. Dickory, dickory. I know you sick of me, but you a guy's enemy. If you live wickedly, don't be an idiot. Follow for trickery, most I has had enough. Call all the deacons up and all of the captains. It's time to get out there. We never react there. We swing in the action. Cause you running out of time. Uh, yeah, you running out of time. Uh, yeah, don't be tripping up. Dickory, dickory. The deacon pulled up on your dock, blew up the spot. This never stops. The prophets that got here to light up your block. They taking no else to break up the spells. And it's back to the shit that is here on your watch. Ticking the top. New day, got a new play. About to do it all again, no blocks. The kingdom approaches and this irreproachment. If you still observe it, you might be an ops. Alert before we even die. Curse, I shook cause Aruba got rocked. Prophetically speaking, we're here to break kingdoms. So no, we ain't leaving till we see that shop. Jake on top, patiently waiting to drop. The saints on the way for the swap. Jay got next, so we kick it down those no knocks. And taking the kingdom, me snatching from Edom. Reclaiming our freedom, but it's gonna get hot. Redeem what they buy. Watch how we stick in the plot. Hands on his heel at the box. We hunting for fox. That shit ain't hit on them rocks. The most I done spit up the clock. Watch. Quest to wake the 12, hitting all the spots. They try to track our trail, can't connect them dots. Speeding the freedom and knots. This number six was to leave it a shot. Ticking the top, time is at hand for the flock. Man, hasten them gates before they lie. Hickory, dickory, I know you sick of me, but you a guy's enemy. If you live wickedly, don't be an idiot. Follow for trickery, most I has had enough. Call all the deacons up, and all of the captains. It's time to get out there, we never react there. We swing in the action, cause you running out of time. Uh, yeah, you're running out of time. Uh, yeah, don't be tripping up. Gotta keep it up, cause you're running out of time. Uh, take time, take time. Son of the world. Uh, uh, I've never been swallowed. So, yo, I was coming to get you. My man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
dice if you do this it will be war Remember the law, kingdom is ours. Dragon is raw, we coming for war. Nations gon' fall, you ready for war? Strong in the law, and if I fall, then pick up my sword, you killing them all. Blood on the floor, you ready for war? Bra, bra, who? You ready for war? Who? Bra, bra, who? You ready for war? Who? Bra, bra, who? You ready for war? Who? Bra. The time has come, are you scared? Yeah. Pass me the sword of a lance yeah. I do me in blood everywhere yeah. Father, teach me your ways Before the Lord takes you away Told me be bold like a lion This is a war, somebody die yeah. Never give up, never give in This is a fight, we're destined to win Strike the enemy, aim for the head Pay the rise, I'm down there again Hit him again and again, again and again I can't show no mercy The people we gotta defend Give them a hundred percent Gotta be worth it I know that you're listening You must remain humble and disciplined You must keep the hunger and vigilance And execute punishment vengeance I must apply when I'm older Know that the time's getting colder Pushing this weight on my shoulders Get light with the sword of the host Remember, my avenger You're a fighter, a defender For your father, a contender For the body and his numbers This is you teach, I meditate Until we walk up through heaven gates I'm ready to fight, won't hesitate For the law of my life, I'ma dedicate I'm Dedicate, then you will elevate Remember your father in heaven, no surrogate Sharper your sword on the stone for the heaven Remove all that leaven, get ready, don't hesitate We in the battle, skedaddle or detonate Remember your stock, get it poppin', then decimate We are the sons of the prophets, no featherweight Till for this battle, revive what they desecrate I'm ready for war, ready to bloody my sword Ready to kick in the door Ready forever, the devil been big And I seen that you did it, I'm ready to soar I'm packing my Bible, got everything with me I want her to give me, I heard you before I gotta put in this word for my people Then I eat cause I'm ready to roar You ready to roar? Ain't for his head Nah, it ain't dead if his blood isn't shed Bet he gon' pay for the day when he begged him to raise And he race off our faces instead Woo! Fire from heaven, no threats Eat him, gon' need him a rest Sword through his crest, call her relieving my stress We end in his name nonetheless I am a son of a leader I'm trying to part me a Peter I heard what you said, but these demons ain't ready I don't need a mic, I need readers Ready to battle whatever, whoever can get it Let's think of what Bishop he needs And pull up and beat us the black Cause you know that there's how many heaters Can never defeat us, we are the leaders Wait, hey Boy, you gon' have your day Swinging and slinging that sword Better remember that it cut both ways Better fix your face, cause this race ain't cake Yeah, be humble, don't step out your place Your patience possessing your soul Remember don't fall, cause the king on the way The king on the way, and I can't wait All of these heathens gon' vacate We coming with vengeance, so don't put up in We giving new meanings to May They pull up and shut up whoever is tripping So me and my victim with scriptures They give them the business, no kidding, I'm ready Ready ain't nothing, I'm petty I'm slicing up better than Nettie Remember the law, kingdom is ours. Dragon is raw, we coming for war. Nations gon' fall, you ready for war? Strong in the law, and if I fall, then pick up my sword, you killing them all. Blood on the floor, you ready for war? Bra, bra, who? You ready for war? Who? Bra, bra, who? You ready for war? Who? Bra, bra, who? You ready for war? Who? Bra.
men's conference where the prophets of God gather once a year in unity and in purpose to chart the course against the forces of darkness. This sacred assembly is where leaders from across the world converge, driven by a common mission to strategically dismantle Satan's kingdom. Here, amongst the wisdom of the ages and the fervor of the faithful, they find strength, they find purpose. They find the resolve to confront the darkness that shrouds this present world. Here's where the steadfast and the unwavering advance. This isn't just some gathering or summit. <laughs> nah, this is a conclave of divine inspiration. Our mission is to awaken the 12 tribes of the children of Israel from their slumber. To illuminate the path of righteousness and to reveal the truth that has been hidden for far too long. Here's where they are fortified with knowledge, wisdom, strength, and purpose, being made ready to take this truth to the next step. Here we stand on the precipice of change. Ladies and gentlemen, believers and warriors, disciples and prophets, welcome to the round table. Yeah, look, we never backing down. Yeah, we never backing down. Okay, we never backing down for the Lord. We gonna stand up. We gonna stand up. We never backing down. Okay, we never backing down. We never, we never, we never. Yeah, cause we gonna teach the people. We gonna teach the people. We gonna spread the word. We gonna spread the word. We gonna preach the word to the world. And we gonna bring them in. Yeah, we gonna hit the street. We gonna hit the streets. Till they alive. Till they alive. Yeah, cause we gonna teach the people. Most high, shalom, shalom, shalom. Most high, Christ bless. Welcome to another edition of Escaping the Plantation 2.0. I'm your host, Captain Gedaliah. To my left, Officer Nahum. To my right, Officer Mishael. To my far right, Officer Menahem. And to my far left, Officer John. I'll pray for the most high. So we gonna just, we, you know, we transparent on the show. We ain't gonna act like that didn't just happen. You know, could nobody see that, could you? 
Can nobody see that? Y'all, come on, man. Who raised it? They don't even know what we're talking about. They didn't see it. It's an optical illusion. You didn't see it. All right? It never happened. <laughs> but all praise to the most high, brothers and sisters, man. We got a jam-packed show for y'all today. Hey, last week we went over the, uh, the psychological warfare of the oppressor. All right? Let's pull up the thumbnail for today. We're going to continue with that, but we're going to have an added thing on it. All right? So we got the psychological warfare of the oppressor and the book of Clarence. Okay? So we're going to continue with um, this psychological warfare of the oppressor. But we're also going to add in the addition the book of Clarence. And you may say, well, how does that connect? It connects perfectly because the psychological warfare that the oppressor has done to us has now caused black people to not want to go watch the book of Clarence or to hate to see biblical black imagery. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Y'all already know what it is. But before we do, let's go ahead and read that first scripture of the day. The book of Psalms, chapter 71 and verse 2. Go ahead. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. So we ask the Lord to deliver us in his righteousness and to cause us to escape. To escape what? The plantation. That's what That's we own, right. brothers and sisters. We is own the plantation. And if you like me, you, I'm ready to go. Okay, so Lord, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the prophecy's got to be fulfilled. We're going to stay patient, you know, but just know we're praying for vengeance and we're praying to get up out of here. We're praying for our mass exodus out of this place called spiritual Egypt. Babylon the Great, the United States of America. All right, so we're going into the psychological warfare and, of the oppressor and the Book of Clarence, all right? So we always start the show off of what's called the Righteous Rant of the Day. Go ahead and play that. All right, brothers and sisters, y'all already know what it is. Every single show here on Escaping the Plantation 2.0, we always do what's called the Righteous Rant of the Day. Well, we rant in righteousness. All right, so with that being said, what we're going to talk about today is the whole show. The entire show is a righteous rant. Why right. is that? Because the entire show is jam-packed with things that piss me off. <laughs> so when I'm pissed, we righteous rant in righteousness. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the very first thing. So now, last week we show, at the end of the show, we show a show called Them. All right, if you haven't seen it, I think it's on Prime Video. It's called Them. It's very, very good. It goes into the psychological things that we went through uh, as far as racism is concerned. Uh, it also goes into uh, satanic things that have been done, demonic things that have been done to our people to cause us to have psychological warfare. Uh, also, it goes into, um, you know, the inner man, you know, especially the last scene we showed with um, the, the man on the show. Um, I think it's Emery. Mr. Emery was his name. Uh, there was a, 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 a what the world would call a sambo or like a coon, okay? That uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A caricature. That's it. A caricature in which that caricature would drive things and drive things home, drive things home in his mind, or make him think certain things or see things. And that caricature would try to provoke him because he would see things that was happening and he would want to do something or say something about it. And that caricature would, would uh, basically put a battery in his back. Let me just put it right. like that. To cause him to do something that he shouldn't do or cause him to not think rationally. Okay? All right. So I think that caricature was the flesh. That's what it is. The caricature was the flesh. All right? He gave in to the flesh a few times uh, because of that. All right. So let's go into the first uh, video that we got. It's from the same show. All right? It goes into Redliner. Let's pull it up. So a few years back, West Compton, green as can be, not a Negro, Mexican, or Jap in sight. But as you can see here, in less than a decade, the entire neighborhood is completely flipped. Red City. In fact, they had to build more housing just to accommodate all the Negroes who want to live there. So, what are you prepared to do for us? 7% interest on loans for all properties Southland Trust Realty acquires. Seven? We can get four from some trust. Please don't bend us over on the interest here. Not with all the business we're about to toss your way. You guys are going to sell the houses for double what you paid and charge what? 20% on the mortgages? Wait, you're charging Negroes more than 20%? 
There's no way anyone can get out from under that. If your bank wasn't legally prohibited from lending the Negroes, you'd do the same. Within reason. Six percent, fellas, huh? Let's get this done. The city will approve any new Southland Trust development, and he's confident once all the original owners have sold it. Not a given. Tell me my fucking business. Chicago, Baltimore, Lansing, Oakland, Seattle. Now that was foresight. Move just one black family into a decent white neighborhood, and the other homeowners will throw money at you faster than you can count it. Negroes are stupid. So you see this, don't you? This is where red line it came from. All right, where they would draw a red line on the map to keep Negroes in one area. This is how the ghetto was created. They're showing you right here in the show how it actually happened. They would move one black family into a neighborhood, and all the Edomites would want to sell. Huh? Then they would charge the, the, the black families 20% or more on those mortgages, knowing that they could never pay it off. They eventually would default or go into foreclosure, and then they would, buy the, they would have the house back from the foreclosure and then sell it for an upcharge. It's been going on for, for decades. They've been doing this for decades all over the country. And this is how a lot of these Edomites got rich in the banking system, in the real estate business, wholesaling, fixing, flipping houses, buying uh, uh, multiple family units and things of that nature. This is how this was created. This is how this was done. This is why real estate became popular. And then, you know, it's really crazy. They stole the land to do all this. That's ridiculous. The entire land was stolen from Gad and Reuben. And that's the only way they're able to do what they're doing when it comes to real estate. Okay? Watch this. So he said, look, you move one black family in, and all the Edomites just start throwing all kind of money at you. All right? Play it. They don't want to live among other Negroes. I think more American than people willingly paying double for something they can't afford in the first place. <laughs> what happens once they realize they have been swindled? Well, you could always ask Miss Coyster if you could borrow a sanitary napkin. <laughs> <laughs> if they make their mortgage payments, we win. If they default, we win. You pray they miss their nut. Then you put those houses right back on the market. Add another markup. And by this time, it's Pause. only... You hear that? We pray that they miss the mark. We pray that they can't pay for it. This is what they bank on. This is why every year around income tax time, they start putting out all kinds of sales. All of a sudden, everything is on sale during income tax time because they know you're going to give them their money right back. They know your eyes going to be big and you're going to buy that car that you don't need or you're going to buy that house that you don't need, right? You're going to want to, oh, your wife going to see all these damn uh, HGTV shows and look at the granite countertop and the, uh, laminate flooring and all of that, the heated flooring and things of that nature, the heated garage floor and all that. She's going to say, ooh, I want to move into a neighborhood that got that. What the hell? And then you end up spending all that bread on that. And the Edomites are saying, I hope these Negroes miss their payments. Because we're going to make money regardless. If they default, we win. If they make their payments, we win. So it don't matter to us. But if they do miss their payments... We're going to put them houses right back on the market for upcharge. Esau get paid off the interest. Bruh. He don't care about, if, his, if he's selling the house for $250,000, he don't want you to pay for it cash. The hell is this? That ain't good enough for him. He want him and his children to make money for generations. That's what he want. Give me uh, Isaiah 5 real quick. Verse, uh, what is it, 9? I ain't read it in a minute. Let me look at it real quick. Isaiah 5, regarding Esau's tact tactics as it pertains to housing. He always been like this. It's nothing new. Isaiah 5, and let's read, let's read verse Isaiah 5 and 8. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 8. Bring it out. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. So this is the so-called white man. It says, woe unto them that join house to house. This is what he does. He puts you on top of one another. He built these houses real close where you don't have no yard, no backyard, no side yard, no front yard, and you just closed in. But because of the area, you say, you know what? I'll move my family over there even though my kids don't have nowhere to run. My dog ain't got nowhere to run. You understand? It ain't even right to even be like that. But that's the mindset that he put us in. And guess what? When you move into the ghettos, what you hear? Baby mama, baby daddy drum over here. Hey. They smoking loud over there. They hey. downstairs playing 2K to 4, 5 in the morning. The hey. dude upstairs and his wife always fighting, be beating her. She beating up on him. The police are always getting called. The person across the hall from you blasting their music. You ever been to New York City? You ever seen them skyscrapers? 
You ever see them ghettos, them apartment buildings that be high as the sky? You know what I'm talking about. If you're from the north, you definitely know what we're talking about. You're talking about skyscrapers that go up 60, 70 floors. 80, 80, well, 20 apartments on each floor for, for uh, 70 floors or something like that, or 15 floor, whatever it may be. I'm not sure they're quite the exact math. But what does that do to you psychologically? That mess with your head constantly. Do you get no rest? This is why the Bible says, Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place. You can't go nowhere. When you go over here, they go neighbors. You go over there, they go neighbors. You go to New York City and some of these places, you can't even park. Bruh. People, people ride around their building for hours waiting on a parking spot to open up. Don't get off at 4 or 5 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Oh, your ass grass. You understand? You're going to be riding around till 7 until people actually get up and go to work. This is why people play, take public transportation. Then what happened on the public transportation? They pissing on the uh, subway. There's fights going on. Niggas get on there break dancing at 3 in the morning. He's like, make it the... Come on, Bruh. man. Women having babies and crap. You know what I'm saying? They get, oh, am I wrong about that? You get on the subway in New York City or Jersey, and you be like, "This, we need to just get, just give me a camera, just give me a camera, and never cut it off." It's gonna be a reality TV show. The real life things that go on in the subway and on public transportation. That's why the Bible says Deuteronomy twenty eight verse sixteen. This is why the Bible says this. Come on. Join house to right. house so there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. You are all throughout the country, all throughout North Carolina and Mississippi and Alabama and Georgia, and you see rows and rows and rows of cotton field and land, miles and miles of land. And you look way off in the distance, put your binoculars on, you see a big old mansion way back there. You say, damn, how the hell, why the hell they got 700 acres? One person. There's a show called Yellowstone. I actually like the show. The show called Yellowstone. Them Edomites has 700 acres in ah. Montana. And didn't want to sell it. They wouldn't sell nothing. They like, hell no. My daddy stole this from the engines. What? My daddy stole this from Gad. And damn it, I want it. I'm going to keep it. By any means necessary. Go ahead, read that. The book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 16. Go ahead. Curse shall thou be in the city. So curse shall we be in the city. So this is a part of it. What we watching on this video, it's a part of us being cursed in the city. They set the ghettos up. They created the ghetto. Go ahead. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And cursed shall thou be in the field. That Edomite said, hey, y'all going to charge Nick Rose more than 20%? Even he couldn't believe it. Huh? You know what I'm saying? They said, man, if you, if you weren't legally uh, buying it not to be able to sell the Nick Rose, you would do it too. He said, within reason, though. Damn, more than 20%? Damn. Nobody can wow. pay that off. Nobody can come back from up under that. And they know that. But we don't know finances. We don't know real estate as a people. We behind. We just now flipping houses. That's we just now learned about real estate. The way after they done came and did their thing. Go ahead, read again. Curse shall thou be in the city. So curse in the city. And curse shall thou be in the field. All right. So go back to that real quick. Oh, go to the next verse. Curse shall be thy basket. Verse 17. Yeah. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. So we cursed in our basket and our store. The well, place where we have our goods. We ain't never, before Bishop Neal was t uh, bringing it out, ain't none of us ever had no pantry. We ain't had no pantry in our house. Your mama put the damn uh, cereal and all that crap on the top of the damn refrigerator. That's that, am right. I wrong? That's why your, that, thank you. That's where your loaf of bread is. That's where your damn um, <laughs> cereal is. That's where your cookies at. They all right. on the top of the refrigerator. It wasn't no damn pantry. Right. Exactly. So the Bible said, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. We didn't know nothing about storing food. You know what I'm saying? Even now, well, for, for those of us that have never done that before, somebody got to teach you how to keep bowl weevils out of your, uh, your rice, keep bowl weevils out of your beans and things of that nature. You don't know how to maintain and take care of that. Somebody got to show you them type of things. But guess what? Esau been doing it. They're ahead of us when it comes to that. Why? Because we cursed, miseducated, and psychologically destroyed. You He's understand that? Today. Now get to 43. That's what I wanted. By how they lend to you. Verse 43. Go ahead. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So the white man came as a stranger to the Americas. Now he's above us in America. He, stayed, huh? he came and he raped, robbed, murdered, and pillaged us in order to get his position. It happened. Somebody going to tell me, yeah, I don't like black Hebrew Israelites because they're prejudiced against white folks. We're not prejudiced for telling the truth that you did.
That's right. That's the dumbest thing ever. But in this white man's world, that's logical to them. You say, hey, look, stop beating me. They say, hey, 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 now. You can't tell me to stop beating up on you. That's prejudice. What? Stop oppressing me. I'm tired of being oppressed. Stop doing this to me. Hey, hey. Cut that down. You're too loud. I don't want to hear this. It's hurting my ears to hear you scream for agony. You're prejudiced. You're racist. What? No, we were revealing the wicked like the Bible say do. Read it again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Come on. And thou shall come down very low. We came, we came down very low. We at the bottom of society, right? We, in the, we are the most impoverished. Go ahead. He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. So he owned the bank. We just saw it on the, on the, on the go back to it real quick. Go back to it real quick. Play, play it from where we at. Population of Negroes who can't secure traditional mortgages. Do you need an abacus? Uncle, 6%. Pause it. He said, Uncle, y'all got me. You convinced me. We're going to make a lot of money. 6%. That's the type of conversation they have. What? But the Bible says, he shall lend to thee. Go ahead. And thou shalt not lend to him. But we don't lend to him. Go ahead. He shall be the head. He going to be the head like they having this conversation right here. Go ahead. And thou shalt be the tail. And we going to be the tail at the bottom. And what come out of the tail? Crap. Dung. Waste. The worst. That's why our communities stink. That's why our food is destroyed. It's disgusting. That's why you get your pick fives where you can get $25. You can get five different types of meat. That ain't run for real. My hometown, they had a place called uh, Values Marketplace. And you go into Values Marketplace and you take $25, you could pick five different types of meat and get as much meat as you want for $25. Now, hey. why in the world would they be just so generous to black people to put a store in the hood that will give us so much meat for so little? The hell is that this? meat was defiled. It's been many times we don't open up that meat and you go, oh, that's spoiled. What the hell? You understand? Could they do that to us? We are the tail. We receive the feces in the, in, of society, the dung of society. They give me that real quick in uh, First Samuel, real quick. He gonna raise the beggar out the dung hill. The Bible real. We are the tail. We at the bottom. We at the end. Go ahead. First Samuel two and eight. First Samuel chapter two, verse eight. Somebody read it. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. Go ahead. He raised it up the poor out of the dust. Out of the dust, the and, dirt. Go ahead. And lifted up the beggar from the dung hill. See that? And lifted up the beggar from the dung hill. Remember yesterday, uh, well, Sabbath, Bishop went over Lazarus, right? And how he was considered a beggar. You understand? Hey. So that's talking about the Israelites. We are the beggars of society. We the ones always saying, we shall overcome. Uh, give us reparations. Give us food. Give us uh, food stamps. Give us this. Give us that. Because we at the bottom being nourished by the face of the serpent. And the Bible says we are the tail. We are the boo-boo. You understand? We is living in squalor. Right? What? Right. To set them among princes and to make them inherit the thrones of glory. The throne of glory. Go ahead. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. Uh -huh. And he has set the world upon them. Right. So the Bible says he's going to take us from the dung hill and he's going to lift us to sit amongst princes. All right. So we're going to be the rulers on this earth. Kings and priests. Hey, All right. Go hey, ahead. Can I bring something out real Yeah, go ahead. Go Give ahead. me Deuteronomy 23. And let's read 19 and 20. Because mm -hmm. listen, we won't never supposed to be on the bottom. We was always supposed to be above all nations of the earth. Hey. But because we fell under these curses for not keeping the commandments, everything that we show is because of our sins. Right. All right, read it. The book of Deuteronomy 23 and verse 19. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. You see that? The most I said we ain't supposed to lend upon usury on our brother. Mm -hmm. But you know what we do today? Hey, man, let me borrow $5. Right. I'll give you 5 but you got to give me 20 back. Mm -hmm. That's what we do to each other. Right. Go ahead. Usury of money. Uh huh. Usury of vittles. Uh huh. Usury of anything that is lent upon usury. So, black folks, Israelites, we are not supposed to be using each other when it comes to money, funds, things like that. We're supposed to deal with each other right. right. That's right. Verse 20. Uh -huh. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury. You see that? That's how I always was supposed to be set up. The nations, the other nations, we can lend to them upon usury. 
But now we fell on these curses. Mm -hmm. Verse 43 now we the, now they the head, we the tail. Read right. on. But unto thy brother, thou shalt not lend upon usury. But unto your brother, you ain't supposed to lend upon usury. Go ahead. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to, uh -huh. and the land whither thou goest to possess it. So, you see, it was always set up for us to be on top. We was never supposed to be going to the bank borrowing nothing. Mm -hmm. These nations was always supposed to be under us to serve us, for us to use them at our will. Right, right. Hey, hey, uh, give me uh give me Micah chapter two and verse one real quick. Mm -hmm, We're gonna read mm -hmm. two all the way down to uh verse two. Yes, yeah, because you know, hey, hey, Cap, it's it's funny you bringing this thing here out here. You know, you, you gotta look at what Esau doing. Mm -hmm. Esau got is he he's the hand of the wicked, right? That's right. So he he got the earth in his power. Everybody's under his his rulership. Right. So read what you got real quick. The book of Micah, chapter two and verse one. Woe to them that devise iniquity. So the Bible says, woe to them, destruction, death unto them that devise iniquity. Look, look what they're doing. They're having that yeah. secret council. Right? Hey, pull it up. Keep us in the corner, but pull up just so yeah. they can see the so they can see what um, the office is bringing out. You bring it from the top one more time. Woe to them that devise iniquity. That's what they do. They devise iniquity secretly, mm -hmm. right? Think about it. Ain't nobody that look like us that's black or Hispanic or Native American in that meeting. Right. We never even knew those conversations took place. Right, we never knew. Secret in the closet. Dang. Yeah, look at that thing, man. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Woe to them that divide iniquity and work evil upon their bed. Just think about it. They was thinking about this. You know what I'm saying? Just like, you know, you got to sit down, you got to study. They, they've been studying us, watching us just like rats. That's why when they put us in them in them low income uh, uh, places, we got we, we call them projects, right? Yep. That's why they call them projects. It's a project. They they studying you and, and seeing what you what, just, what's that movie? Uh, they clone Tyrone. Yeah. You know what I'm Read saying? They, they got things set up like that. Read. When the morning is light, they practice it. Right. They practice that thing. So they doing it right now. They manifesting this thing. So now this thing's being thrown in our face. You know what I'm saying? Our people smoking weed and, and selling drugs to one another. They don't even care. What? This thing is happening right there in front of their eyes. They just throw it out at you. Right, right. Just in broad daylight. Read. Because it is in the power of their hand. Because the earth is giving it to the hand of the wicked. Job 9, 24. Right, but read. And they covet fields and take them by violence. So that's what happened to Gad. Just like what Cap was bringing out. Hey, America, what North, South, Central, the Caribbean, all mm -hmm. that was, 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 was Gad. Uh, the, the whole Northern King, the whole ten tribes. Read. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house. Right. So they got the, the Gadites in them. They got them in Indian reservations. Right. If you go to them Indian reservations, them, them guys out there sniffing air. You know what I'm saying? What? Out of, out of a, a can. The aerosol can. Getting high. You know what I'm saying? They yeah, drinking they all up. the liquor. You know what I'm saying, Cap? That's crazy. Yeah, Gad one like I think Gad is like um, probably the top most alcoholic of the a community in all of the United States because they're very depressed. Right. What? They get, what, what they call it? What they, what they call the liquor uh, when, they, when they drink it? They, they, they said they get it from the White Devil, right? Blue Eyed Devil. I forgot they got a name for it, but every time they drink that, that thing drives them crazy. Read. Even a man and his heritage. Right. Mm -hmm. Even a man and his heritage. Right. So now, now you got a heritage. Let's say you got now you got to get this loan. From this this Edomite, right? Now you got the loan. Guess what? You can't pay that loan. Now, now you 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 owe back taxes, so on and so forth. They got you set up. If you can't you can't afford it, guess what? They, they, the bank gonna take it from you, right? That's guess ridiculous. what? If you don't pay your taxes, because now you inherited, you give it to your kids. Your kids got them curses on them. They can't pay the taxes. Guess what? Now the government, the state, got it. So right. you don't own jack. Right. Bruh. Praise to the Most High. So let's move on. Let's move on to the next uh, video. So we showed how they, they mess with us when it comes to housing, right? Banking, things of that nature to keep us in debt, keep us impoverished, keep us living in where in areas that they want us to live in, right? Now go to the next video real quick. Yeah, play that. Here's an example of how eminent domain is used to push out minorities. 1912, a black family, the Bruces, buys a section of Los Angeles beachside property and makes it a kind of resort for the African-American community who weren't allowed to visit most other city beaches. White upper and middle class neighbors harassed, intimidated, and threatened the Bruces with violence. But they stood strong. Those neighbors then did the next logical thing. They invented something they could call a public good and used government to do their dirty work for them. They got the Manhattan Beach Board of Trustees to condemn the Bruces' property via eminent domain laws in order to create a public park. Wow. The land went unused for 34 years before becoming a park. Pause. In 20 for 34 years... It's set vacant. Nobody 
was doing anything with the property. What was wrong with us having that for ourselves? It's because we're the Israelites, and they hate us. Damn, and that was to wow. break us psychologically. This is the type of thing that the white man does. The so-called white man, Esau, eat him according to the Bible. These are the type of things that he does. It's not to just break you physically, because that ain't hard. Because he got the power over our bodies to do whatever he want. He wants to break you psychologically and spiritually so you will always be in subjection to him. You don't Even when you suspicious. have an opportunity to retaliate, you wouldn't. That's what Stockholm Syndrome is. Where they beat you and beat you and beat you until you start to love them, care for them, nourish them, look out for their well-being. Is Weez sick? Is Weez sick, master? You huh? understand what I'm saying? This is, the, this is the type of thing that they did to break us. This right here, this eminent domain, and guess what? Eminent domain around right now. You can own your property. You can own your land. You can be up to date on your taxes, and they can come in and cause eminent domain and take it. Hey. It ain't nothing you can do. That's oppression. So it sat vacant for 25, 34 years, and then it became a public park. Go ahead. Let's see what happened. Play it. To the family, minus the massive increase in property value, of course. Pause it. So in 2022, they gave the family rights back to it, but they weren't able to get the massive property value that came with it. Esau Bruh. cleaned the bank, and then he gave Negroes a crumb. What? That's where I'm saying he's going to lend to you. You ain't going to lend to him. Play it. Government bullying? Check out the full video on our channel. So that's what eminent domain is. Go to the next one. So they come through and they take that from you. Like what the officer brought. I'm glad you brought that scripture out because it go with that video. They oppress a man and his heritage, right? Take them by violence. First they used to take it by violence like you mentioned, gag, where they come and just rip it out your hands and murder you for it. They don't do that no more. They just be strategic. They put laws in place. So when an Edomite say to me, or another nation say to me, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, huh? well, your, your ancestors never did. Your ancestors murdered to get what they got. Rape, robbed, and pillaged. Then set up a government system and an educational system that caters to that white supremacy that they gained through murder the hell is and this? slaughter and bloodshed. So I don't want to hear, we all equal, that's in the past. No, you still benefiting off of it. Now, if you want to be a, 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 a good Samaritan, just give us everything back. That's right. And go back to the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Just go, you know, do your thing over there. You understand? Petra and all that. Let, let us have everything that was originally ours. Bring it let out. Jaffet have uh, Greece and all that back. Right? Let, us have, let them have Australia back. You know what I'm saying? Let uh, Ishmael have his land back, right? Let everything go back to how it originally was. Give us Jerusalem and all, and Lebanon and everything that uh, constitute Israel and what it is. Let us have that. You understand? Set up our government on this earth. But we don't, we don't want it like that. We want Christ to take it. You understand? So we know they ain't going to give it up. The Lord can't let them give it up. If he let them give it up, then what, what's going to be the point of sending his son? He going to send his son to take it. You understand Good. what I'm saying? Right. Go to the, go to the next one. Yeah, Christ gonna eminent domain your ass. Permanently. Are you going to Lake Today in the Daily Dose, the red summer of 1919. The summer of 1919 marked a breaking point behind the ever rising tensions surrounding the migration during World War I of African Americans from their southern homes to cities in the North and Midwest. Once the war was over, Thousands of white soldiers return home to find their factory jobs filled by previously southern blacks. Combined with an economic slump in post-war America, tensions snapped between whites and blacks over increased competition in both the jobs and housing markets. Pause it. Wait, stop. Stop. I told you. So because of the housing market starting to float, you know, we were starting to be able to buy houses, afford them. We were starting to be able to afford uh, some of the luxuries that the white man had had for a very long time by himself. But we was always in servitude. We was coming up out of that a little bit in the, in the early 1900s, and he got envious of it, right? And tensions flared between us. Go ahead. The devil! Please. ...of largely white on black rioting to break out simultaneously in many American cities. During the summer of 1919, 
Riots across the U.S. would break out in cities like Washington, D.C., Knoxville, Tennessee, Omaha, Nebraska, and more than three dozen other American cities. None, though, was as dramatic as the events that occurred in Chicago. On July 27, 1919, African-American Eugene Williams had gone with some friends to swim at their local beach. In the midst of having fun, Eugene inadvertently crossed the line that separated the white and black sides of the beach, Look at prompting a group of white men to stone Eugene before he could safely return to the black side of the line. Eugene was struck in the head and subsequently drowned. And when the police arrived on scene to collect accounts by several eyewitnesses, the officers refused to arrest the white men responsible for Eugene's death, instead arresting a black man for no logical or apparent reason. Pause it. So imagine being a witness to that. You on the black side and you swimming and you having a good time, right? And then you see one of your brothers get hit upside the head with a rock and drown. Then when the police arrive, who are supposed to be the epitome of justice, right? And to protect and serve. They arrive, whoop up on some black folks, don't arrest the Edomite that just stoned the brother and knocked him upside his head, and what? actually put you on the back of the pad wagon. Bruh. What does that do to your psyche? It, de it, de it, de it, de it destroys your hope. Go back to Proverbs 13 as well. It destroys your hope. Now you say, when the police pull up, I'm afraid of you now. I'm not thinking that you're going to protect me. I'm afraid of what you might do because I saw what you did then. And you teach that fear to your children, to fear law enforcement. Not all law enforcement, but some, okay? There are some crooked cops out there. Everybody knows that. So now you become psychologically unstable when the red and blue lights get behind you when you're driving. When you see a police coming your way, you get nervous. You get scared. You understand? You don't want to make no sudden moves because you might get killed. Where do you think that come from? That come from these times right here. Hold up. Read that for me. Hold the book up. of Proverbs 13, verse 12. Read. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. So the heart sick, when sickness of the heart, which is the mind, goes into mental issues. Right? Mental instability. You're not stable. You off. Now you start going into alcoholism, drugs, all kind of things to suppress how you're really feeling because your heart is sick, right? It's because your hope has been deferred. When we see these things happening to us in our community, it defers our hope. Our hey. hope is no longer in law enforcement. Our hope is no longer in the government. Hey. Our hope's supposed to be in God, but many of us wasn't raised that way. Many of us don't know the truth. So now we broke it. What do we start doing? We start sympathizing with the oppressor. The hell is this? We want to brush their hair after they just killed a black man, ran into an apartment, his apartment, and shot him dead on his own couch while he was eating ice cream. Huh? Gotham John. Then the brother of her, the brother of him, go hug the demon. The judge, the black woman, give her her Bible. How does that happen? Because we ain't right. We sick. What you understand? That really is. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Go ahead. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Right. When the desire cometh, when we see our desire, the judgment of God brought on these heathen. That's when we're going to get our desire, what we want to see. Go back to it real quick. So the red summer of 1919 was bloody. Go ahead. It's over. White and black mobs had mobilized throughout the city, rioting for the next five days until local and federal authorities called in 6,000 National Guardsmen and infantry in an effort to restore order. The Guardsmen were positioned around the black belts of Chicago to curtail any further attacks by whites. By the time the violence had ended, 38 people were dead, most of them African American, mm. along with 537 injuries. Pops. Many. So, all of the most of the deaths was black people, but I thought they said it was black and white mobs. Huh? The black people had a mob too. I know they ain't stronger than us. So what happened? It wasn't no black mobs. It was mobs of Edomites coming to our community, killing us. That's what happened. The devil. They don't want to be honest about that. Go ahead. Hey, Cap, they just said the infantry was called. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. Even if there was a mob, you ain't doing nothing against that army. Hell you don't stand no. a chance. Mm -hmm. now, let me get a script right go quick. Ahead, go ahead. Let's get limitations of uh, 4 and 17. 
Watch this, because this goes right into the psychological uh, effects of what happens when this goes on. Watch this. Hey. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 17. Read. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. Now, when that brother was swimming and the authorities was called, what happened? His eyes failed because he thought that they was coming to help. He just got more black people persecuted. Read. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. They can't help. That's not what the Lord set them up for. They are the sword of the Lord here to put judgment on us. Watch this. Read on. This is the mind state. Watch. Read. Verse 18. They hunt our steps uh -huh. that we cannot go in our streets. The minute they see those things happen, they're afraid to call the authorities. They're afraid to go outside. All of this is mental warfare. Read. Our end is near. Uh -huh. Our days are fulfilled. Read. For our end is come. That's exactly the mindset of our people. We wind up in the bottom. We get persecuted, and then we feel like we have no hope. That's that, uh, what you call it? A heart deferred? Right, hope, a hope deferred. deferred. That's mm -hmm. exactly what that is because your mindset is gone. Read on. Watch this. This is the nation. Watch. Our persecutors are Our swift. Who? Persecutors Read. are swifter than the eagles the of the Lord heaven. The Lord said it is the so-called Edomites. The eagle is their sign. It said they swift. They are the persecutors. Read. They pursued us upon the mountains. Uh -huh. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. So that's their job. This is why these things is happening. Was that 1919? And then yep. when they give these documentaries, they always like to make it seem like it was a balance. Right. A little right. bit of blackhead. No, y'all murdered us. Let us move on. Let us move on. All right. We got to move on, y'all. We only at number three. <laughs> And I got 39 things. I'm sorry. We going we have 40 minutes. We're gonna get it in, y'all. We're gonna get it in. Everybody gonna get a chance to touch on all these topics. I'll praise it. Go to number five. Skip four. Skip four and go to five. Skip number four, go to number five. So we continue to talk about the psychological warfare of the oppressor. We also gonna touch on the book of Clarence. They are connected. Trust me. Watch this. Let's play that. Uh, it's you liberals who have lifted them up, Howard. Paul. You conservatives make a mistake. You can't afford to strangle hope in people. Without hope, people become dangerous. Pause. No. Without hope, people become dangerous. I want y'all to follow. Follow what he's saying. They playing psychological games, mental games with us. It said he said, without hope, people become dangerous. That's what the Bible just said. Hope deferred make the heart sick. You become mentally insane, bugged out, and Hurt. you do things. Right? Watch this. Let them invade our society. You give them jobs, political jobs. Oh, you missed the point. It's only the smart ones we move up. <laughs> that makes it even worse. Oh, you know, we have to move them up. If we leave a smart one in the ghetto, he might develop into a leader against us. But if we raise him up into white society, we neutralize him. He feels compelled to try to act like us. He loses his identity and uh, his racial anger, if he has any. He becomes alien to his brothers. They realize he sold them out and they grow to hate him. He becomes worthless to them and safe for us. Uh, no, thank you. In fact, in his love for the creature comforts, except for his color, he's become one of us. So you see this? <laughs> Give me Psalm, Psalm 64, so verse 1. So... What he just said was very clear and to the point. Because a, a brother went on our, one of our social media pages, an actual black man, and said, oh, you know, the, the, the Willie Lynch letter been debunked thousands of times. Well, uh, okay, you're saying the Willie Lynch letter was debunked. You are an example of the damn Willie Lynch letter. If the Willie Lynch letter been debunked, then how is it still effective in our community today? Hey. The tactics of the Willie Lynch letter are being done in the black community today to keep us destroyed. That's ridiculous. What is he talking about? So I, that's because of this right here. Got a little bit of money, wear a suit and tie to work every day, and then all of a sudden you think you're a part of them. And your own brother start to hate you because you're educated, because you talk proper, because you have a good job, because you have it. You understand what I'm saying? It, you can't win. They playing games with us. Read that for me. The book of Psalms, chapter 64, and verse 1. Go ahead. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Come on. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. So it said, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Go ahead. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. That's what that was. That was secret counsel. They so bold, they said it in front of the slaves, in front of the servants. The servants sitting right there just listening to it. Kept like, dang, they talking bad about us. 
But you could, even if they went back, even if the servants were to go back and say, look, this is what they're doing to us, y'all. They're going to let one of y'all get promoted and, become, and be high in the government or something like that. And so you eventually turn on your own people. Negroes will be like, man, shut you. You know how we do. Man, shut up. You ain't hear master say that. Bruh. That's how bugged out we are. They knew what they was doing. There's a show called um, The Underground Railroad. It's also on Prime Video. Bring it and out. in the show, uh, one of the, the Edomite slave catcher, he got a little boy, a little black boy that he keep with him. That's like his little right-hand man. You understand? He saved him when he was young, right? Or he killed his dad and he took the baby. So the baby grew up to a little young man, and he take the little young man with him, and he helped him hunt slaves. Now, the young man, one night they was in Tennessee, and he was asleep. He fell asleep. The little young boy, the little young black boy, got up out of his bed, or got up out of there, took the gun out his, took the gun out of the Edomite's uh, holster, and was playing with it. He could have shot him dead and saved his people. Hey. You know what he did? Took the gun, pow, pow, act like he was shooting it, put the gun back in his holster, went back into the carriage, and chained himself back to the carriage. What the hell? He put the, go look at it. He put the shackle back on himself. He unshackled himself, got down, got the gun, played around with it while the Edomite was dead. The Edomite didn't know what was going on. He put the gun back up and then went and chained himself back to the damn carriage. Bruh. We will chain ourselves. He don't have to do nothing no more. He has broken us psychologically. It's done, finished. Yeah, as a dog, just put yourself back on the leash. What? Read it again. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Read. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. And they work iniquity like you went over earlier in Michael 2. They work iniquity upon their beds. That's what they're doing right here. He thought about that and he said, you know what? I had a dinner meeting. I'm going to tell them about my tactics. Go ahead. Who wet their tongue like a sword. Read. And bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Even bitter words. Read. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. So they come together with these policies. They come together with these plans, like redlining that we saw, like uh, what we're seeing right here from the movie Trick Baby, how basically they came together to say, hey, look, we got to move them up. We got to get them a position in society because they'll turn on their own people. They'll think they're us. Besides their skin, they become one of us. Go ahead. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Go ahead. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. And when they sit around, they all say, you know what? That's remember the Edomite on the other show? He said, Uncle, six percent. He realized that shoot, man. Hey, hey, this is a good thing. Let me jump on this. I guarantee you that that really happened, obviously. Those particular men, they don't say who they are, but that really happened in history. So those men that were sitting down at that table that was discussing how to put these things in place to keep them and their families rich, their, their sons and their daughters and granddaughters and grandsons are billionaires, are millionaires if not billionaires today. The devil. Based off those tactics that their ancestors came up with to keep us in check, to destroy us and uh, exploit us. Go ahead. Huh? They commune of laying snares privily. Uh -huh. They say, who shall see them? They say, who gonna see us do it? And the brother standing right there, but he a, he a, a butler. He ain't going to say nothing. He's probably not educated that much. He don't know how to articulate himself. And they like that. They said, keep the dumb Negroes around us, the ones that we know that we can control their mind because we didn't educate them. Bugged out, man. Go to the next one. I always have to show that video because it's a heavy. Show the next one. Now, this is um, Senator Tim Scott. South Carolina, I think, right? Oh, Carolina. That's South Carolina. That's Carolina to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. So this is Tim Scott. Tim Scott is a, um, I think he's a senator, right? I think he might be trying to be Donald Trump's vice president. I think this was going on. Now, look at this. Read that for us. Yes, sir. This is from Tim Scott. Mm -hmm. She said yes. She said yes. Go ahead. Mindy. Mindy. Thank you for making me the luckiest man in the world. Oh, God. Go ahead. He who finds a wife, what is good, and receive favor from the Lord. Zoom in on Mindy. That's oh, you can't zoom in. Okay, well y'all see what it is. Mindy, eat them out, y'all. This is what Trick Baby just said. Go back to that movie. Go back to the movie. Go back to the movie real quick. You gotta move them up. 
you take the you leave a smart one in the ghetto, he might he might rise up against you. So keep the smart ones close to us. Keep the ones that speak well close to us so we can control them and their people. Go ahead. Uh, it's you liberals who have lifted them up, Howard. Paul, you conservatives make a mistake. You can't afford to strangle hope in people. Without hope, people become dangerous. No, Howard, you liberals have let them invade our society. You give them jobs, political jobs. Paul, you missed the point. It's only the smart ones we move up. <laughs> That makes it even worse. Mm. Oh, you know, we have to move them up. If we leave a smart one in the ghetto, he might develop into a leader against us. But if we raise him up into white society, we neutralize him. He feels compelled to try to act like us. Pause. He feels compelled to try and act like us. He'll marry our woman. Go ahead. He loses his identity. And Pause it. He loses his identity because when you read in Tobin, they say, when you go marry a woman of another nation, you hate your brothers. You hate your people. Go ahead. His racial anger, if he has any, he becomes alien to his brothers. They realize he sold them out and they grow to hate him. He becomes worthless to them and safe for us. Safe, positive. He becomes worthless to them and safe to us. Hey. Meaning what? Docile. He become weak mentally. They playing mental games with the black man. And we don't even the know devil. it. Then they give us their woman. Get Deuteronomy 7-3. Because God law tells us not to marry them. I got to just get the scripture. We forget God law. Watch this. The book, of Deut- the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. Go ahead. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. God said don't make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. We don't give our daughter to their sons. Nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. And we don't take his daughter to our son. Go ahead. For they will turn away thy son from following me. Go ahead. That they may serve other gods. See that what happened to, to my brother Tim Scott and many others? We stopped serving the Lord God of Israel. Guess who we serving now? Cesar Borgia. Destroyed in this country. Go ahead. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you. And that's why the anger of the Lord is kindled against us as a race of people. Because we continue to indulge and engage in interracial marriage. God is against that. He is not for that, right? Go to the next one. What'd you add? No, I was just saying, watching the video, Cap, that's, uh, it was just putting me in the mind of what Bishop Yawasak was bringing out this uh, past Sabbath. Mm-hmm. These are different ways that they destroy that, that Negro unity. Mm-hmm. This is the plan that J. Edgar Hoover had after he died. It's still in play yeah. to this day. Right. Go to the next one. Go to what we had next. I don't even know what it is. Just grab it. Yep, play that. People wonder why I keep fighting against bringing the National Guard or, or Trump sending in troops and all that, because that's the Band-Aid, and I'm tired of Band-Aids. You know, we never have the courage. America can solve this. It can solve the violence. It doesn't have the will to solve it. doesn't care, mm. because we want to get to the root, just like going back to the cancer of, of racism. The root of it is, is that you look at the 16, 17 communities in Chicago where the most violence takes place, you see the same exact scenario and definition. Double-digit unemployment, lack of economic development, lack of housing, lack of opportunity, lack of investment, most coming back from incarceration with nothing and no chances, underfunded, underperforming schools, high poverty rates, when you put all these realities, if you took those realities and went to the North Shore <laughs> and did that for the next 15 years, you'd see the same thing going on there as you do here. Right. So, so we, we created this condition. You know, right. I, I say all the time that the government, both local and national, are the co-conspirators of the violence. They're the hidden hand. Mm. They've created it. Now they sit back and condemn it. Right. Bam. And pause. Say, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. That's some heavy stuff. What a boy! Ain't got no uh, sound bounce today. Ain't no sound bounce today. No bombs or nothing like that. No, no, you know, no air horns or nothing. Dry ass show. Come on, man. Anyway, he made a good point. We created it. Then we sit back and condemn it. They created the Negro in a lab, like Bishop always say. They created the Negro in a lab, and then they sit back and mock the Negro. They sit back and condemn the Negro. But they created that. 
They put the guns in the ghetto. They made us impoverished. He just broke down a lot of the things that they be doing in these communities. Both local and national government has done evil to us and put us in. That goes back to what we was reading earlier in Psalm 64. You know what I mean? Go back to Psalm 64 and 6 now. I know we a little shorthanded back the other day. But we just had the AV meeting. Damn. We're supposed to be stepping it up, not going backwards. Verse 4? Yep. Verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse 6. Go ahead. They search out iniquities. They search out iniquity. They search out iniquity. They know how to put us in. Let me ask you this question. Ask you a question. Why is it a liquor store on down there every corner? Why in every convenience store you can buy condoms, you can buy cigarillos, you can buy vapes, you can buy pork, you can buy whatever you want. Hey. Any type of evil you want. You can get beer any type of any type, any uh, time of night, things of that nature. You understand? They do that on purpose. That's not by a uh, coincidence. That's purposeful. Right. There's a church on every corner. Damn there. There's a drug dealer on every corner. And everybody Bruh. know he the drug dealer in the community, but won't nobody snitch on him. Huh? They search out iniquity. Go ahead. They accomplish a diligent search. And they diligently search that iniquity out. They sit down and they say, what will allow or what will cause the so-called blacks and Hispanics, to fall. They go to the Bible, and they say, oh, wait a minute, the Lord said they shouldn't be homosexual. Push it in their media. Push it in their music. Subliminally put it on them. Right? Oh, they shouldn't be defiling their temple. Give them, put them in poverty, and they give them as much weed and drugs and everything in their community that they want. Huh? You understand? To, to, to try and suppress their reality. Go ahead. Both the inward thought of every one of them, and the heart is deep. So he breaking down all their tactics. We are, sometimes we have to let the white man speak to y'all because y'all don't believe us. You don't believe God. You don't believe the Bible. So we say, okay, Mr. White Man, could you tell them all the evil y'all done did? And you be like, yeah, 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 okay, okay, I believe y'all niggas now. What? <laughs> I believe God now. You understand that? I'm telling you, bugged out. Go to the next one. Go to the next thing we had after that uh, video. So Nick Cannon had that guy on his show, and he was breaking down all the evil that goes on in the inner city of Chicago and how it was created by the government. They created those conditions. Go to the next one. Play that. They put it right in our faces. Pause. So... They played they play that song, Killer Mother Effer. Zo can y'all zoom in or no? Can All right, read it. Killer Mother Effer, I need a hug. The next song says, I need a hug. So look at the brain. Look how they got the, the, the little brain uh, stems and things up there showing out. They, they know that it plays on our psyche. They know that it messes with us psychologically, y'all. They know it. Huh? They know it. It's right there in your face. They show you in these movies and stuff like that, and y'all be smoking weed while you watching it, talking about, man, that was a good movie, man, that was good, that was deep. Okay, and then go listen to the damn same music and rot your brain out. Okay, so it says, kill a mother effer. Then the next one said, I need a hug. Let's see what happened when I need a hug, please. Look, they looking like, what they the put hell? It. You saw they were looking, that was then when they snuck in. Jamie Foxx, not when they snuck in to see what was going on. You saw they looked at each other like, what the That's hell? Ridiculous. You see this? You see how that mute, they was doing experiments. This is under the ghetto. Underneath the ghetto, right underground, they had underground cellars and things of that nature. Underground laboratories where they was experimenting on Negro, cloning Negroes and experimenting them, putting, fabricating the same people, put the preacher in the neighborhood, put the drug dealer in the neighborhood, put the dope push in the neighborhood, put the prostitute in the neighborhood, this and that, put the owner of the strip club in the neighborhood, put the chicken store in there or the chicken uh, uh, restaurant in the neighborhood. We could put crack and cocaine and all kind of different stuff in the chicken. Same thing on Undercover Brother. Remember that Undercover Brother? They put the... They put the they, they were controlling what? black people through the chicken. Damn. You understand? Go ahead. You ask all go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah. Give me that that, that um evil communication corrupt good manners real quick. Because it's it's funny, it's funny you bring this out here again, that cat. Hey, you gotta look at the music, right? Mm -hmm. Look at all the music they play in the clubs. Look at the uh, radio station. Right. Right. 
who owned those record labels? Who who's the who's the owner of them? Mm -hmm. Amalek. Yep. Right. Amalek on all that stuff. The TV. Look at all the movies that's coming out. You got little girls, little baby girls trying to twerk. You know what I'm saying? Trying to act like they mama. Right. <laughs> Look, hey, this crazy is I don't know what. But read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So just like what we was watching there on, on um, They Clone Tyrone. They had that hardcore music coming on. Guess what? They fighting in there. Shooting. That's why there's a shootout or killing at some club, some city, somewhere in America. Even overseas. You know what I'm saying? Think about that. Why is that happening? Look at all the derogatory stuff that's taking place. Mm -hmm. That So the, all that communication, all that stuff they listening to, guess what? They saying it. Guess what? They're going to act it out. It's going right. to act out on them. Just want to bring that out for y'all to think about. Right. Go to that next one real quick. There's a little article, a screenshot of an article Officer John found. Shout out to Officer John. He found this little article real quick. Zoom in on it. The mystery runs deeper than previously thought. According to a psychologist, to, to a, to, excuse me. The mystery runs deeper than previously thought. According to psychologist Annette Shermer, reporting new findings today at the Society for Neuroscience meeting in New Orleans, Rhythmic sound not only coordinates the behavior of people in a group, mm. it also coordinates their thinking. So this is going into the psyche of music. It says rhythmic sound not only coordinates the behavior of a people in a group, it also coordinates their thinking. Go ahead. The mental processes of individuals in the group become synchronized. Become synchronized. That's why when you was in the club back in there, they would throw your hood up. Everybody know, yeah, doing all that. You're like, what the hell? What you, we, what? Huh? we were just all just having a good time. You know what I'm saying? We family with you. You know, everybody get all the most man grandma. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell? How we get so emotional like that? I mean, everybody in the group get all emotional. Bruh. Don't let them hit that high note at the funeral. Oh, man, everybody going to cry. So I'm telling you, it's because rhythmic sound, it becomes sick. Your, your mental state becomes synchronized. Go to a concert. If you ever been to a concert, every, when, when, when the whomever is the, the person that's coming into the concert, or the, the artist that's being, um, uh, that that's, the concert is behind or, or about, when they go on stage and they get to singing and rapping or whatever and that beat drop and you hear them speakers and stuff like that, everybody become in sync. Everybody's singing the words, everybody moving the same way with the same mindset. You say, how is that? You can move a crowd of people with rhythmic sound. The hell is this? Go ahead. This finding extends the well-known power of music to tap into brain circuits, mm. controlling emotion and movement. Damn, that's why you uh, hands on your knees, all y'all. Hey, that's why you, you little girls, hey, doing all that stuff. Even on a uh, cha-cha slide back in the day, hands on your knees, hands on your knees. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's to put that psychological. He had to put that in there. Nothing. Not, the whole dance is is an okay dance. Cupid shuffle and all that stuff like that. It's just a little dance, you know. It is harmless. But he put that hands and your knees on there because he know that's going to what? Fall into the psyche. Everybody going to start wanting to do that. Matter of fact, when I was a kid, that was my favorite part. That was my, not for me, for the woman. When we was a hands and your knees, start looking around like, uh, That's what we, <laughs> am I right? That's, I'm just being real. Y'all ain't got to act like y'all been good your whole life. Y'all no, been okay, giving the commandments. Been, <laughs> okay, all right. No, I ain't no one out here. Don't leave me on the island by myself. <laughs> Bruh. We was all watching that crap, bro. Okay. Am I right? We, Come on, help me we, out. Hey, we gonna do you like that, man. We was all in the club, man. So, so, hey, listen. Soon they play those songs, and them girls start dropping it like it was hot. Yeah. We take out the flashlights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, and the, uh, see, he, I knew it wasn't just me. Okay, that's because we all was but. Hey, listen, that music was messing with all our head. We didn't know no better. That's why we got to continue to push out righteous music for brothers that hold back their talent that can really sing. Hey. For brothers that really, really got a voice, like really can sing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, I think I know. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, shalom, Israel. Bring it up. <laughs> <That's how crazy laughs> <you guys. laughs> no, nah, I'm just messing around. But you know what I'm saying? Like, we really got a lot of work to do, y'all. We got to push this music. You know what I'm saying? That's because right. if music can get you in sync, and, and control your emotions and your brain circuits, then God laws need to be fed through the music constantly. Damn. Prophecy need to be fed through the music constantly to help us. Go ahead. Bring it out. Yes, sir. 
Uh, to actually control the circuit, the brain circuitry of sensory perception. Yeah. This discovery helps explain how drums unite tribes in ceremony. Mm. Why armies march to bugle and drum into battle. Mm. Why worship and ceremonies are infused by song. Damn. Why speech is rhythmic, punctuated by rhythms of emphasis on particular syllables and words, and perhaps why we dance. So I want to zone in on that last part. Why speech is rhythmic, punctuated by rhythms of emphasis on particular syllables and words. That's why they teach those pastors to talk like that. Bring it out. And then they do all do that stuff like that. That's that's in order to put that rhythm. You understand? To mess with your head and you fall, you under a trance. You're gonna learn today. You be you going under a spell. You don't even know. You understand that? Give me that uh smooth words real quick in Isaiah 30. Give me smooth words. Give me them rhythmic words to make me feel like everything is going to be all right. Don't tell me what the Bible say because that's too cut and dry. Black and white. What the hell? Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30. Verse 9. And verse 9. Go ahead. That this is a rebellious people. Go ahead. Lying children. Read. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Go ahead. Which say to the seers, Go see ahead. not. Go ahead. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Uh -huh. Speak unto us smooth things. Read. Prophesy deceit. That's that rhythmic uh, syllables and how they, they hone in on certain words and stuff like that. And then they do the little clap or whatever. And it's all to try to get you to... Fall like they're feeling when they do that. Ha, ah, ah, ha, You know how they be doing that. And God said, ah, and ah, that, that, ha, ah, that, you may what? think they're just taking a breath. They're not just taking a breath. That pause is to make you find emphasis on what they just said, especially the ending part. And it becomes a rhythm. And next thing you know, you start falling into a trance. You don't go find ahead. that suspicious. Yes, no, go ahead. No, you have, okay. That's that scripture that uh, Officer Paul. It said, mm -hmm. be not deceive meaning mm -hmm. it's going to happen that evil communication is gonna put you under a All spell right, hey. yeah hey give me give me this real quick um i'm gonna show you something with our forefather real quick so like, like how we bringing out how evil communication corrupt good manners right you gonna have give me um first samuel chapter 16 and verse 23 so i'm gonna show you how how on the reverse side just like what cat was saying mm -hmm. you bringing out righteous music hey this thing could put you in a good spirit even if your spirit is upset read what you got the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, and verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul. Right, because we know about King Saul. King Saul, he had hatred for David, right? He was jealous of him. And the Most High took his spirit out of him and put an evil spirit in him. Read. That David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Hear that? An evil spirit departed from him. Why? Because he played some righteous music. He played something that can calm him down. Uh, I was going to say this one little part. I, I was watching this movie with uh, Cuban Gooden Jr. Uh, today, and his mom and them had him playing, uh, had him listening to, like, Mozart and them things of that nature, so that way to help him get smart, help, help him study and learn. You know, at first he was watching TV, all this foolishness, and his mom realized, you know what, this thing here is making him dumb. But I just wanted to bring this out right here. This is very, very important. All oh, praise. Excellent. All right. So uh, watch this. Go to that next thing real quick. Go to what we had next. I had just posted. I think I just posted. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Show that. Yeah. Pull us down. Go to the zoom out and go to the top so we can see the title. Rick. Rick Rubin to Doja Cat. Jews have helped shape the first 50 years of hip hop. So from Rick Rubin to Doja Cat, Jews have helped shape the first 50 years of hip hop. So I we don't have this is this is Amalek right here. Right? What's the Amalek Amalek name? The Rick devil. Rubin, that's his name right there. And that's him with um Russell Simmons. Right, right. So Amalek always done had their hand in hip hop. They done been the ones that funded it. That's why all ARs and music execs and people that own uh, these companies, they all emulate. It's a reason for that. Zoom out. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I don't like the fact that it's cut off, y'all. Just, just drop it. Go to the next thing. Just drop it. Because it ain't, I mean, I don't guess it ain't y'all fault. I don't know. I don't even want to blame it. It's probably the article. I don't know. Go to the next one. Go to the next TikTok video. Come on. 
psychological warfare. All right. Come on. All right. So this brother right here, TikTok video, play it. Almost all white people are against racism. The majority of them are racist and love young color. Pause. Look at this docile Negro. Goofy as hell. Almost all white people are against racism. The majority of them aren't racist and love beyond color. Okay? Watch this. I want you to notice something. This is like psychological warfare. What's the first colored fist he got right there? What's the last? Okay. Love beyond heck? color, but your race lasts. You see how we always end up at the bottom? But the east, east side of the top, it's just psychological. Now, go inside. Go to the next pictures, the screenshot. I want you to go inside. Because you know I just couldn't pass by this. I had to say something. I'm sorry. Pray for me. I'm trying to stop being like this, officer. I see something on social media. I have to. I just, I'm got to. Bishop, have mercy. Bishop, have mercy on me, Bishop. Please. I be having to say something, y'all. Zoom in, please. I had to say something. So this is me right here, Top G Israel. Read it. It's from Top G Israel. Ask them if they are willing to give back the la give the land back to the natives and give up their freedoms and liberty they killed to acquire. I'll wait. So I had to show the Negro in the damn from the damn video. He don't know what the hell he's talking about. So I knew what was gonna happen. So I post that group. I post that in the group. You see, it got 16 replies. It's got more replies than any other other post. You see that, don't you? So look what look what they start saying. Look at the, watch how watch how the devil come out. This one happened in Carolina. Red Wolf. Yeah, Carolina Red Wolf. Give oh, up Lord. freedoms and liberty. Why should we all be slaves again? You hear this? I told you. What the no? Heck? They love beyond color. Look at this. Go inside. Go to the next picture. You know I got receipts. Go to the next picture. Look at it. Look at this. Stop blaming. You're living in the past. Move forward. You would be much happier. Yeah, it is. This Damn. is Esau. Why no? Why don't you give up the land? You understand? No, no, no. Stop blaming. Stop blaming. Watch this. This is from Top G to Ann Asbury. And this, my friend, proves my post exactly. Hey, and love beyond color, I told you. Ask the right question and you'll uncover the truth every time. Wake up, bro. <laughs> go, go to the next one. At the, no, no, go back, go back, go back. Well, you, you, well, you well. Okay, go ahead. And it's right, not right. Welcome. So this is what Esau do. They look for typos. The typo does not take away from the fact that you the devil, the Bible speak of. Whether it's W-R-I-T-E or R-I-G-H-T, you the D-E-V-I-L. <laughs> you the devil, the Bible speak of. Go, 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 to the next, go to the next one. Go ahead, watch this. Go to the next one. Zoom in. So look, look, look. Let this be going back and forth. Have mercy on me, Bishop. Please have mercy on me. That's I'm going to stop, I'm stop doing it. <laughs> I can't help it, man. I'll be having to say so. Go ahead, man. Please. Laugh out loud. That's their go-to. Can't justify their evil heart, so they look for grammatical errors as if that makes my point any less true. Typical. What? Watch this. Their go-to, welcome again. And an ability to use syntax ensures a point is put across with more emphasis, even if said point remains wrong. You see this? Get a land back. Right, you still the devil. Watch this, go to the next one. Forgiving doesn't come with bargains and ultimatums. Yeah, it is. Hold on. Uh, is that even ultimatums? That's untimatums. Untimatums. Thank you. He ain't, he ain't correct her, though. <laughs> untimatums. Go ahead. My Irish ancestry doesn't give me the right to blame every British person alive today. What they do to you? Them your people. Hey. Go to the next one. I had to show y'all the devil. I had to let him see the devil in his own pole. He ain't he, 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 he respond. Go ahead. Black country 40 to top G Israel. You're all their mush. Go ahead. Who did I kill? Why should we give up our land for something we didn't do? You see this? That go the devil right there. Why should what we give hell? up our land for and something hell. we didn't do? Go ahead. And how far back do you go for reparations? I'll wait. Look what I said. The beginning of time. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go out in the eating back, damn it. <laughs> see, go, go to the bottom right there. I think that's a little Love beyond thing. color. You see this? I told you. See, you see, I want him to see. Your post is BS and you're doing it just to get likes. Our people psychologically destroyed, man. These folks been doing much evil to us and we just accept it. The Negro done became docile. Docile. He done became, he done started to, uh, give me that, Avengers, uh, Enemies and Avengers, 2nd Maccabees 4. 
16, I think. We had to be our enemies and avengers. We know they did evil to us, but then we want them to avenge us. Right. Go ahead. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6, and verse, you say 4? No, verse uh, 16. 4 and 16. Oh, 4 and 16. I got yeah. you. 2 Maccabees, chapter 4, and verse 16. Start at 15. Bring it out. Verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians, best of all. Go ahead. By reason whereof, so a calamity came upon them. Read. For they had them to be their enemies and avengers, uh -huh. whose custom they followed so earnestly, Read. and unto whom they desired to be like in all things. And they want to be like them in all things. They want them to be their enemy and avenger. They hope, he's hoping that that's going to get him a job. That ain't going to get you no job. And if it did get you a job, your ass going to get fired first time you mess up. Or they find somebody that's they, that look like them to come in and replace your black behind. They will have you train your new boss. What the We've hell? We've seen it happen year after year, over and over, decade after decade, to our brothers and sisters. You understand that? Now, go ahead. You just you laugh at that, bro. <laughs> we trained our own boss. Right. <laughs> That should really happen, bro. That should really happen. Yeah. Calling me, asking me questions about your job. Anyway, um, damn, John. Yeah, had to cut me like that. All right, let's move on to the Book of Clarence. Okay, let's move on to the Book of Clarence, Psychological Warfare and the Book of Clarence. The Book of Clarence is a new movie that came out uh, starring um, uh, Lakeith, San Lakeith, is it Stanfield? Lakeith Stanfield, okay. Um in which he plays a brother that embarks on uh, trying to portray himself as being the Messiah in order to get financial gain, which is what your pastor do today. Uh, but anyway, um, that's what he does in the movie. Actually a good movie. I think we went to go see it as a congregation yesterday, right? Uh, really good movie. I thought it was a good movie. I thought the imagery was very, very good, right? A lot of Christians mad, though, because they just they don't understand nothing. You understand? Go to the first picture real quick. So this is the uh, a scene from the movie. All right, we can't show any physical playing scenes. Obviously, we can't play it on video because obviously the flag us. But pull up the first picture real quick. I had all the pictures in order. I gave you the numbers. That is not the first picture. It literally say no. Do y'all when y'all put these pictures up? Do y'all put them in order, David? So how they get picked up? And that's like the seventieth seventieth picture. Come on, man. Stay in the spirit. Zoom in. All right, so this is um, a scene from the Book of Clarence where he's standing before the Romans, all right? Now, if you look at um, some of the watch and reads that we've done, right, you will see that this has been depicted. Now, I'm not saying that the uh, director watches us, but I think the director watches us. This looks just like the watch and read that we did when Christ is being brought to his crucifixion to be to, before Pontius Pilate. So... This is actual biblical imagery. Right. All of the Jews are black. Lakeith Stanfield plays a Jew. This brother is supposed to be the brother. Clarence is the twin brother of Thomas the Apostle. Thomas was a Jew. So he's a Jew. So all those people in there are Jews. This is accurate imagery, and they're mad about it. Right. Go to the next one. This is supposed to be Barabbas. Barabbas that they free. Remember they said free Barabbas, right? But he black. Look at this. Bring Look at all them black folks in the back. Go ahead. This John the Baptist. Clarence goes to John the Baptist to get baptized in Jordan. Go ahead. And this is supposed to be Christ. This is supposed to be the biblical imagery of Christ that they portrayed in the movie. Now, over his left shoulder to our right of the screen that's supposed to be Peter. I envision Peter looking like that, bro. When I saw it, I said, yo, that's, because remember, Peter wasn't no punk. Peter cut your ear off. He didn't give a damn. You understand what I'm saying? So when I seen him, bro, I said, damn, that kind of, that remind me of what Peter, he was, not, he was, uh, uh, he wasn't playing no games. He was ser serious, austere at times. Hey. So I'm looking at it right here. I'm like, man, this is perfect biblical imagery. This is what the Bible is discussing. Now, Christ may have been a little darker than that. I don't know. But. This is what the, the Bible is describing. They mad about this, y'all. Go to the next one. Go to the next image. Now you're in the spirit. John the Baptist. Okay? This is biblical imagery. Go ahead. 
So you got Clarence at the top and the left. You got this guy named Zeke. Then you had a, a, a sister named Tiana Taylor that played Mary Magdalene, right? We know Mary Magdalene had a, a, a evil past, right? But then she repented. At the bottom left-hand corner, you got this Edomite Pontius Pilate. Accurate. John the Baptist, accurate. Barabbas, accurate. Go to the next. And this is Clarence uh, going to sit down with Mother Mary, as they call her, Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? So look at this right here. She black. And then Joseph was in it too. Right. He black. Right. You understand? So and she said something heavy in the, um, she said something heavy in the movie. She's, he said, I want to know how your son do his tricks. She said, my son ain't never did no trick. She said, people call them miracles, but he been doing that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, ooh, that's some fire right there. That's some fire from his youth. Remember, from his youth, he was rebuking lawyers and doctors and stuff like that in the law. So this show you right here, the proper biblical imagery is being portrayed, and the world is mad. Okay, speaking on the world is mad, I don't know if you noticed, Officer John, it looked like it was a pastor in the theater last night. Oh, Lord. And that dude could not sit still. He was getting up, walking up, down the aisle. One of the officers said he was in the bathroom, and he was just standing, staring at the mirror at himself like, I can't believe what I just saw. He was black or white? He was black. Oh, man. <laughs> Destroyed. Hey, get First Maccabees 348. This is why we can't believe it, y'all. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. So all of that is biblical imagery, accurate biblical imagery. Read that for me. The book of First Maccabees 3 and verse 48. Go ahead. And laid open the book of the law. And laid open the book of the law, read. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. The heathen went out of their way to paint the likeness of their images. They had to go into our book, our records, and create themselves and insert themselves into our records. That's Not as the right. Edomites that the Bible calls them. Not as the Romans as the Bible calls them but as the Israelites. That's what they did. And that's against scripture. You understand? Now, Jeremiah 14 and 2. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Yep. Let's go. Judah mourneth, mm -hmm. and the gates thereof languish. Read. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. The Jews are black unto the ground. Now, watch this. Play that first video. I'm going to show you. These haters mad. What's, What's going on? Play this. I hope this Negro don't, um, don't flag us later because he seemed like the type. He's a Christian. Play that for me. <laughs> Diabolical. Play it. He a well-known apologist or something like that. Go ahead. What's going on, everybody? So I seen the preview for this movie pop up on my Instagram last night. Somebody tagged me in it. Uh, called The Book of Clarence. First thing that I saw is that Jay-Z is involved in it, all right? And so uh, the guy who's directing it, he also um, worked on a music video, Legacy, uh, for, I think, Jay-Z's album, 444, right? So him and Jay-Z are working together on this movie, right? You've got, you know, uh, black Hebrew, uh, I guess, Israelites. you got a black Jesus Pause. in the movie. First thing he says... Not if the movie's good, not if he liked the acting. The first thing he says is, I guess this is some hat, black Hebrew, Israelite, black Jesus type stuff. Why did Negro heck? hate himself so much? It's that psychological warfare. Damn. That, and then he goes on to talk about how Jay-Z is, is a, a devil worshiper. Beyonce's a devil worshiper. They blaspheme. You blaspheme the word of God. That's ridiculous. You blaspheme it too. The hell is this? So anyway, this movie was this movie is not blasphemy. This movie shows psychological warfare. Right. This movie shows how our people ain't right in the head. It also shows how Jerusalem actually was during that time. You think smoking, you think doing drugs, illegal herbs and stuff, you think that's that's uh, unlawful herbs? You think that's something new? <laughs> you think that's the man has always done these types of things. You understand? Man is back on the earth. Nothing new under the sun. Man is back on the earth. He's been doing the same thing for centuries. He's going to find a way to smoke him some dope. Hey, Kevin, right. and we was at dinner. One of the brothers asked uh, us a question. He said, um, you think they was dancing like that back then? We said, yeah. Hell they, yeah. They was reveling. They was doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. That's remember, right. Remember, the, the Bible talks about uh, how perverse 
we were. We were in perversion when we was in Jerusalem. You understand? Give me uh I wanted to pull this the other day. Give me Ezekiel 22 right quick. I'm try I can't read the whole thing. It's too much. Go to Ezekiel 22. Speaking about Jerusalem. Verse 1. Come on. Read it kind of quick. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, and verse 1. Go ahead. Let's go. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now thou son of man, wilt thou judge? Wilt thou judge? Wilt thou judge the blood the bloody city? Go ahead. Yea, thou shalt show all show her all her excuse me. Come on, man. Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. Thou shalt show her all her abominations. The bloody city is Jerusalem. Show Jerusalem all her abominations. Go ahead. Then say thou, thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. the city sheddeth blood in Mur the midst of it. Murder. That her time may come and maketh idols against herself to defile herself. And idols in the city. This is Jerusalem. Go ahead. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed. Read. And hast defiled thyself in thine idols, which thou hast made. Go ahead. And thou hast caused thy days to draw near. Babylon and, coming. Go ahead. And are come even unto thy years. Read. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen. Therefore Jerusalem became a, a reproach among the heathen. That's why the Romans was the guards. They were the government. They were the uh, police officers at that time. Go ahead. And they mocking to all countries. Go ahead. Those that be near and those that be far from thee shall mock thee, which are infamous and much vexed. Go ahead. Behold, the princes of Israel, every one were in, were in thee to their power to shed blood. Uh-huh. In thee have they set light by thy father and mother. Disrespecting mom and father, mo father and mother. Go ahead. In the midst of thee, they have dealt by oppression with the stranger. And, os and oppressing your brother. Go ahead. In thee, they have vexed the fatherless and the widow. Not taking care of the fathers and the widow. This is all going on. Robbery, all that. Go ahead. Thou hast despised mine holy things uh -huh. and hast profaned my Sabbath. Profaned the Sabbath day. That dude Clarence was saying he didn't believe in God. But he was the brother of, supposed to be the brother of, of Thomas, go ahead. And thee are men that carry tales to shed blood. Lies, lie on somebody, get them killed, go ahead. And in thee, they eat upon the mountains. Go ahead. In the midst of thee, they commit lewdness. They commit what? Lewdness. They commit lewdness. So that's that proc the pro provocative dancing, twerking and, and, you know, seductive dancing. You've seen the women doing them brothels and stuff. That ain't nothing new. They was doing that back then. That's why the Bible say that. You understand? Now go back to uh, go back to that. No, don't go to that video. Go to the next one. Oh, we got a call. Okay, let the caller come in. Can they get? Can they do it? All right, now. Bring the call in, y'all, and let us see him or her. I don't know who it is. Gonna start screaming. Me call, man. Make sure ain't nobody. It look like soul Zacharias. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, most high Christ bless. Shalom, most high Christ bless. All right, y'all, we can't do this. We ain't got much time. I don't just just drop the call. Just drop the call. Um, let's move on. Go back to the go to the next video. I just I gotta get I gotta get through this. Go to the next uh, video. Jameis Samuel, who is the um, director. Go ahead. Just love black Jesus. Mm. Because I am sure that he was black. I right. mean, the descriptions, there, even though my, my motivation for the book of Clarence wasn't to depict Jesus as any particular color, I do believe that whatever your race, whatever your... Hugh, you should be able to see Jesus at least once As you. in your own reflection, right? Because yes. really, what color was Jesus? Well, Jesus was the color of Jesus. Because we, he wasn't blonde hair and blue up. But he wasn't. But, That's exactly. what we know. He was not <clears> from <throat> Sweden. Pause. He got to be careful. You see how he, because he wants this movie to sell. So he got to be careful. He got to kind of not speak too well. You see, he kind of, well, Jesus was the color of Jesus. No, nah, bro, speak plain now. You made him black in the movie. Stand on it now. Stand on this. Go ahead. Jesus was the color of Jesus, but he was not from Sweden. He did not look like Max von Sydow. He did not look like Bjorn Borg. Bjorn Borg, <laughs> right? <laughs> that was not G. I I mean, you know, skin the color of burnt brass and, and... Exactly. He said they cut, they, cut, they cut it real quick. 
So he understands Jesus is a black man. He didn't want to speak plain, but he understands Jesus is a black man. Go to the next one. So his motivation uh, in the movie to make everybody black was so that um, we can see the proper imagery as it is written. That's, what That's I right. Be. That's what IUIC is all about, pushing the proper imagery. All right, go to the next one. Pull the next video up. Watch this. Let's get to the back black Christians. The Book of Clarence, which is set to be released in 2024, which is about a man named Clarence living in the time of 29 AD Jerusalem, where he looks to capitalize on the rise of Jesus Christ's fame. This movie is produced by Jay-Z. Yes, Jay-Z, the hip-hop mogul. Are we talking about the Jay-Z that said, Lord forgive him, he got them dark forces in him. Please blame it on the sun of the morning. Thanks again. And the sun of the morning is Satan. People may ask, what's the issue? It's just a movie. Everyone seems to be obsessed with Jesus, but don't believe in him. The same book that they use and swear on in the court of law. And last but not least, here's an image of black Jesus. Here we go again with the black Jesus. Listen, I don't care if Jesus was white, Mexican, even though he was a Jew. The fact is that Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. Pause it. What the hell that got, what the hell that got to do with any damn thing? I'm telling you, our people messed up in the brain. I told you, it's the psychological warfare they play with us. That's ridiculous. This movie is depicting true biblical imagery as it is written. The brother got a problem with it, but then going to say, here we go with the black Jesus again, even though I know Jesus wasn't no Mexican. I know he was a Jew, but I don't care if he was Mexican, but his color don't matter. What? You see what how messed hell? up? We contradict ourselves in one sentence. Right. One sentence, two sentences, we completely contradict ourselves. That's how bugged out we are. That's how much we hate the truth. You understand Damn. that? That's why Christ said, if you believe on me, give me that real quick, John 7, 38. That they don't have wisdom. There's no wisdom in our brethren that's in the Christian church. They can't see the Lord. Read that for me. The book of John, chapter 7, and verse 38. Come on. Let's he go. that believeth on me, uh -huh. as the scripture has said, uh -huh. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You hear what the Bible said? It's, this is Jesus speaking. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of of living water. Can you read what those rivers of living water is? Verse 39. Go ahead. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. So those that believe on Christ was going to receive a spirit. But you had to believe on him as the scriptures have said. Go ahead. For the Holy Ghost was not, was not yet given, uh -huh. because that Jesus was not yet glorified. All praise to the Most High. So that was the spirit that you will receive when you believed on Christ as it is written. Go to the next video. Go to the next one. Go ahead. Play that. Well, hello again, everybody. I just want to come to you really quickly, just talking about something that's really been burdening me and bothering me. Right. He paused. He can't sleep at night. He can't sleep at night because of the black image of Jesus and the apostles. He destroyed. He messed up in the head. It's been bothering me and I can't sleep and I'm just, it's haunting me at nighttime. You need to be haunted. You need to be afraid. Go ahead. Trailer for the Book of Clarence, which is the new produced Jay Z movie that's coming out next year, and especially about a guy who basically mimics the miracles and the things of Jesus so he can become famous too. Uh, from what I've seen in the trailer, this is complete blasphemy, and I just I can't even stand it anymore. And this comes from Jay-Z, the guy who called himself Jehovah and the guy who said he was basically Frank Sinatra reincarnated and from his wife who made Church Girl, which was a horrible song. And, you know, she's been worshiping at the altar of Balfamet now for over hey, a decade. pause it. Go to Acts 8, verse 20 right quick. Because they keep, they keep trying to haunt in on the fact that he was mimicking Jesus' miracles. When, the Christ and the, when Christ and the apostles walked the earth, and even after Christ died, there were always people rising up saying that they were Christ's. Bring it out. John, the revelator, said, even now there are false Christ's. So during that time, there was people rising up saying that they was the Messiah. That ain't nothing to do. You're it's gonna not learn today. that. It's the black imagery, y'all. It's the black imagery. Hey. Watch this. Go to Acts 8 real quick. Mm -hmm. 
I want you to read verse 9 real fast. The book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which, bef- which, be- which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Go ahead. To whom they gave... They all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Read. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. He bewitched them with sorceries. That was going on during that time. That's right. Well, people were so, at that time, and this dude right here tried to get, you know, get right. Peter rebuked him again, and he finally tried, I'm going to look, let me get right, I'm tripping. You know what I'm saying? But when he saw the apostles and the power the apostles had, he wanted that same power. He said, I want that power too. That's the same thing with Clarence. That ain't nothing Her. different. But Her. they ain't in there talking about, oh, yeah, oh, man, the book of Acts chapter 8 is blasphemous. You don't know the Bible. You understand that? Watch this. Go back to, um, go back to uh, that same scripture real quick. I want you to skip down to verse uh, 14. No, verse 14, that same chapter. Uh, so verse, verse 14. Eight. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, Go ahead. they sent unto them Peter and John. So they sent Peter and John to Samaria. Go ahead. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Watch this. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Watch this. Then laid, they, then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. You see that? He offered it. That's the book of Clarence right there. He seen. He said, oh, oh, I want the fame that the apostles got. I want the fame of the Jesus of Nazareth. I want to get wealth. I want to get fame. I don't want to do what the scriptures say do in order to receive the Holy Ghost. I just want the power you got. Here go 100 shekels. Go ahead. Saying, give me also this power, Mm. that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee. You're going to die with that money, read. Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. That's That's the same thing Clarence thought. He said, he went to his mama, he said, hey, uh, how was he, you know, get captivating the people and stuff like that? How was he performing these uh, tricks? And Mary was like, hey, my son ain't never did no tricks. People call them miracles, but that's the power that he got. That's he done had right. it since he was young. So this, some, this, some, this right here ain't too far off of what the scriptures say regarding Simon. And like, and like Bishop said, shout out to Bishop Nathaniel, what about the fake healers in the Christian church? You know they ain't healing nobody. Hey. Carly Thomas and God and God, y'all, yeah, your mom, grandma, and them. Yes, catch the Holy Ghost in the middle of the nighttime. The Holy, uh, the demon ghost. You understand what I'm saying? They claim they got the Holy Ghost. A bunch of liars. They ain't did nothing. Hold up. Come on, man. Go ahead. Hold up. Give me Hosea three or four. Crazy Everybody people. mad about the Book of Clarence. What you should have been mad at is Mel Gibson. Hey. What you should have been mad at, mad at is that old movie they had Jesus of Nazareth. You should have been mad at the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. That's what you need to be pissed off at. Read it. The book of Hosea 3 and verse 4. Uh-huh. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, Go ahead. and without a prince, uh-huh. and without a sacrifice, uh-huh. and without an image. You see that? Mm. We, have a, we have been here many days looking at this white image of this white boy. Right. They've been showing all these biblical movies of white people playing us. Bring read, it out. Read that last part again. Bring it out. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince uh-huh. and without a sacrifice and without an image. So we finally get a motion picture mm-hmm. that's, in the, that's in the theaters showing the true depiction of the people of the Bible and people that's are mad. That's right. Mad. You, see, you see the evil that we're dealing with? All praises for that brother. He's showing you what the real Jews look like according to the scriptures. Hey. That's what the Bible said. Go ahead. And without an ephraim, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim. So listen, don't get mad at the brother. Don't listen, don't get mad at the Israelites, because we're gonna we gonna expound more on the book of Clarence. All right? Hey, so I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, this, you know how I know he watching the Israelites? Did you see when the apostles marched in in formation? And then they all opened up and Christ walked through the middle? They never did what they did what we did at Passover. Whoa, ain't that what we did at Passover whoa. for the bishops? And the deacons. It's the same thing. They watching us. This brother getting inspiration from what we doing. That's how you know this is the truth. You understand that? You saw the same thing, didn't you, David? You saw the same thing. 
Oh, yeah, we sure did. Joseph Dream, you right. And he came in later with that 19 million. They could have gave what 19 million? That's right. Shoot, you that 19 million, it'd be schools all over the world. For real, though, we doing it right now without it. I'll pray. Go to the next video, y'all. So they watching us, and it's a lot of truth in the book of Clarence. And the stuff they talking about blasphemy, they was really doing that in Jerusalem. Why the hell you think the Lord sent the Romans against the Jews to persecute our black behind? Because hey. we was wicked as hell. That's why. Hey. Play this. Jay-Z's The Book of Clarence, director and writer, recently goes on The Breakfast Club and gives the deeper theological meaning behind this book, his portrayal of Jesus, his portrayal of Clarence, and ultimately with a deeper agenda and worldview that he is attempting to communicate. Book of Clarence is a new movie that is executive produced by Jay-Z, and it highlights the time of Jesus' day and uh, someone there that is desiring to have the same gifts or the same powers as Jesus. And so he's trying to acquire these powers. That's, that's all I know from the trailer. It's someone in Jesus' day and time. So Jesus is kind of in it, right? But they don't really show Jesus in the trailer. And so on The Breakfast Club, they get into Jesus in the movie and Charlemagne asks the questions and then watch where this goes. This goes left really quick. Said about Matthew 24, 5. five. Yeah. That was the debate me and my wife was having this weekend. And that was the debate we were actually having this, this, this morning. morning. It's like who exactly was Jesus in the film. So Matthew 24, 5 says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. This is Jesus telling people that there's going to be false Christ. And listen to <laughs> Charlemagne. Charlemagne, you know better, bro. You know better. This man Pause it. knows. That white boy said, you know better, nigga. We Let's take go. care of you. The hell wrong with you having to do it on your show. They get bad. Go ahead. It's a gang of pastors, knows a gang of Christians. And so where this goes, especially on this verse, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Listen to this. Oh, and, and maybe this is just me being. Why your face look like that? He don't look like yeah, he don't want to tell us. We were maybe, arguing this morning. Yeah, but it. maybe I'm just being a little fake deep. What I took from it was everybody's God. We should recognize everybody is God. But the most important thing is recognizing God in yourself. Recognizing God in yourself, Charlemagne. Like all of us have that walk and water moment, even though Jesus what? is in the film, right? Mm -hmm. And he's clear, and, he, and, he, and he's in the film, and, and I, may, I, I go through... I don't of, know if it's as clear as you thought it was, because me and him was arguing this morning about well, this. My wife got it, I yeah, think. Yeah, 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 see? Yeah. So it was super clear. But, but Charlemagne's wife got it. Here's the thing. And Envy, you know Envy loves an argument. Envy loves a debate. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so there is a God in yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's super important, man. Like when we see each other, it's peace to the God. Mm -hmm. It's peace to the God. Like peace to the God is what Jesus preaches against. Okay, you are not God. Jesus says, "You who are evil," describes people as evil in Matthew chapter seven. Peace to the God is the religion of of the Lord's. Uh, what is the gods and the earths? It is the religion that the Wu Tang Clan believes. It's the really? religion that. Jay-Z believes. So when they would call themselves gods, the, the black man is God. That's what, that's what. That's it right there. That's it right there. Oh, could you get Psalms 82 and 6 and then give me John 10? He said Christ pro preached against that, right? Okay. Bring it out. Psalms 82 and 6. They mad, bro. I'm telling you, they mad. It's the biblical imagery that got them pissed off. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. Come on. Let's go. I have said, ye are gods. God has, the Lord said, ye are gods. The Israelite that's man is right. a god. Go ahead. And all of you are children of the most high. And that's how you know, because the Israelites are the children of the most high. Go ahead. But ye shall die like men. But you shall die like men. Yeah, you are God. But you're going to die like a regular man. Why? Because of sin. We was disobedient and the Lord cast us down and pulled us down to a lower state. Hell. Hey. Go ahead. And fall like one of the princes. So like, let's go see what Christ said. Go back. Yeah, John sir. 10, yes, sir. 34. Yes, sir. Let's you're going to learn today. The book of John chapter 10 and verse 34. Read. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? Uh-huh. I said, ye are God." Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, what's the, what's the, what, what? Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? Go ahead. I said, ye are gods. He said, I That's said, right. ye are gods. Christ quoted 
the Old Testament. Christ quoted the book of Psalms, the 82nd chapter. Right. Doesn't that written in your law that ye are gods? Go ahead. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came. He said the Lord called them gods on whom the word of God came. The word of God came to the Israelites. We hey. are gods. Lord case G. Go ahead. And the scripture cannot be broken. Oh, whoa, ho, ho, ho. Wait a minute. So that scripture real. So the children of Israel, on whom the word of God came to, the, the sons of God, the men of Israel, we gods. That's right. Because the scripture cannot be broken, thus saith the Lord. But he said Christ spoke against that. The Edomites said Christ taught against that. Christ didn't teach against that. Christ was that. You understand? He, <laughs> he created them gods. And why I call us gods? Because we was with the Father and Christ in the heavens before we came to the earth. Message. Go watch Bishop Nathaniel Clay. <laughs> if you want a deeper That's understanding. That's right. Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 36, Come on. say ye of him whom the Father have sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemous, because I said, I am the son of God. So I say I'm the son of God, and you say I'm blaspheming, but the Lord called you a God, and the word of God came to you, and the scripture can't be broken. So if you a God, then what am I? Because I'm an Israelite too, but Christ was the son of God. You understand that? So watch this. Go to the next video. He just, he just mad because, you know, the Bible said we guys. That's what it is. Or five percenter. Now, come on, man. You, you hate that biblical imagery. Go ahead. Huh? Hey, Cap. What, what he just did was he proved Matthew 24. He proved that he came to deceive many by talking about how that uh, Matthew 24 wasn't talking about the actual imagery. Mm -hmm. He used that scripture to try to deceive many in the same sense. Yep. But the Bible just cut Cut them to smithereens, also, or blow them up to smithereens. It don't make no sense, man. They, right. they love to use the word of God and have no way to handle it. That's right. They can't. Oh. Hey, go to the next. Watch this, y'all. All right, everyone, pop quiz. Hollywood is doing a remake of an old fictional story that takes place during biblical times. The movie will have characters like Jesus, Mary Magdalene, John the Baptist, and others from that era. What is going to be the big unexpected twist that happens with all the characters? I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. They're just, they're just going to make everybody black. That's, that's the big twist. That is the unexpected twist. In this story, is, is they're just they're making everybody black. Who could have possibly seen this coming? Hey, man. Produced by Jay Z, which is kind of a joke in and of itself. The Book of Clarence pulls in classic Pause. Bill. It's, that's the very first thing he pointed out. Hey. It, he couldn't actually critique the movie or talk about you know the 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 camera they shot with or. The acting in it or anything like that, the lines, the length of the movie, he had no other critique. His very first critique was the fact that the people in it were black. What the hell? That's what he mad about? Why doth the heathen rage? Could you read that for me? Why doth the heathen rage? And then give me Revelation 11 real quick. Give me Revelation 11. Let's go. 11 and 11. This is what they mad about, y'all. Revelation 11 and 11. The book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11. Go ahead. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God uh, entered into them. Uh -huh. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. They know that this movie can contribute to us waking up. How do I know? All of these videos we're doing about the book of Clarence, right? Somebody, that, a black person that's a Christian church or whatever, or that's just searching. Is going to find some of these videos and they're going to see that thumbnail and say, the book of Clarence, let's see what these brothers talking about. And they're going to come in here and they're going to see us showing in the Bible biblical imagery that these people is actually black and they're going to wake up. Hey. So the white man know that. So he got to try to cast it down, get it out of the box, get it, you know, make it do bad in the box office. He was mad at uh, Black Panther too, and that was a fictional place. You know he's going to be mad at Jerusalem, which is a real place. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Don't give them niggas no hope.
They want to continue to break us psychologically. I'm telling you, brothers and huh? sisters, it's a problem when the Israelite man rise up to be who he's supposed to be. Go to the next video. Nah, you good. Don't worry about the songs too. We get it later. Read that. Go to that next video right quick. I'll... Next video. Next video. Come on now, dog. I had them in order. There you go. Play it. Everyone is up in arms about the Book of Clarence, where Christ is depicted as a black man. Well, Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15 says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So, was the movie wrong? Let us know in the comments. All praise every to the Most High. So, I challenge every social media. I know Captain OC already on y'all, but I'm challenging you on Escaping the Plantation 2.0. Hey. I challenge every social media team to follow the Bishop's vision of pushing these types of videos like this right here. Hey. Highlighting how the movie actually shows biblical characters as it is written. Bring it and out. And then show the scriptures to show that these characters were indeed black. You understand that? Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Yes, sir. These is black men and black women, brothers and sisters. Do not be deceived by evil communications. Go ahead. Hey. The Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Go ahead. I am black but comely. So I'm black but comely. Go ahead. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Go as ahead. As the tents of Kedar, uh -huh. as the curtains of Solomon. Uh -huh. Look not upon me because I am black. Read. Because the sun have looked upon me. Oh, wait a minute. I've been out in the sun. I done got darker. You be out there too long. Your mama said, boy, you're black. Well, you been out in the sun all day? You understand that? So King Solomon, who is the forefather of Jesus, by the way, was a black man. Christ is a black man according to scripture. That's so right. What the hell you mad for? What you mad for? The you understand? <laughs> Go to that book real quick. The uh, uh, what is that book? Uh, critical view, critical review, or annals of literature. I want to show you something. Because not only can we go in the Bible and show you biblical imagery is black, and historically we can show you biblical imagery is black, but we can also show you that the Jews is black according to historical data. You understand Let's that? Let's go. Read that. The critical, the critical review or annals of literature. Where was it written? Go down to the bottom. Was that 17? 13? Something. 33? Yes, yeah, like 1733. Okay, 1733. We'll go with what you said. We'll go with that. Yeah. Right. Go, inside. <laughs> go inside. Read that real quick. The discovery of, of the Gold Coast served indeed yet more to enlarge the sphere of the navigation of the Portuguese uh -huh. than their slave trade. But it forced them also to extend themselves on the coast and to settle colonies in Congo, Angola. Is that it? Yeah, Angola and other places which they had till then neglected. King John II. King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, uh -huh. which had been discovered in 1471, mm -hmm. and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. Read. And from, the, and from these banished Jews, Read. the black Portuguese, as they are called. What they call the, uh, the Jews? The black Portuguese. As they are called. So they was called the black Portuguese, these banished Jews that were sent to the island of St. Thomas on the west coast of Africa. Go ahead. And the Jews in Luongo. That's also in Africa. Who are. Who are despised. Despised even by the very Negroes are descended. The very Negroes that you know in America today descend from the banished Jews, the black Portuguese. Hey. And the Jews of Luongo. So not only are we showing you in scripture. We also showing you a historical facts that was written by scholars. White folk wrote, read this, or wrote this. We was in slavery when it was written. You understand? Go to the next book. The hell is this? Go to the next one. Lost Tribes of Myth. Nope, that ain't it. Nope, that ain't it. That's the same book. Come on, man. Go ahead. Just read this book. Just for sake of time. Negro go, go, go to the go to the, uh, the go back to the title of the book, brothers. All right, thank you. Nature Knows No Color Line, uh -huh. research into the Negro ancestry and the right race by J.A. Rogers. J.A. Rogers was a black man, right? Go inside. All right, zoom in at the bottom. Waite says, 
An ensuing gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. Wait a minute. An interesting gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. Go ahead. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. Did we just see those banished Jews, the black Portuguese as they are called? Right. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. Go ahead. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. Read. The Duchess de Abrantes, wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal, said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. So you got to have multiple. What a bombs that, man? The hell is this? Our brothers and sisters ain't never seen or heard this before. We got to drop the bombs. You understand? So the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. So that book we just read, the uh, critical review and on Annals of Literature, does that go with this? Confirms it. Because and then the Song of Solomon 1 and 5 go with that? Confirms it. Revelation 1, 14? Confirms Jeremiah 14 and 2? Confirms it. Stop playing. This is what the Bible says. Go ahead, read that next part. So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. When they seen that, they said all the Jews is black. The hell is this? Go back to the, go to the other book I had, the Lost Lost Tribes of Myth. I posted it in there. Lost Tribes of Myth. If I I may not have posted, I don't know. Oh, I did. Okay, my bad. That's on me. Well, here you go right here. That's on me. My bad. My bad. My bad. I just want you to get straight to, to one page. You can go right to that last page real quick. Yep. Go to the last go to that first the, the title of the book and then go to the last page. So the Jews is black. Scholars know that. Go ahead. The lost tribes a myth. Suggestion to a Hebrew suggestion towards rewriting Hebrew history. 1930. 1930. Durham, Durham, North Carolina. Oh, Durham. Oh, Durham. Durham. Go on inside. <laughs> go inside. Oh, yeah. Do y'all got it? Okay. Oh, Lord. All right, here we go. Go to the bottom. Nope. That ain't the one. Is that the one I wanted? Yeah, my bad, my bad. That's on me. That's on me. What what the other one I had? I had another picture in there. Okay, this is the one I want right here. Post that. Because I want to get straight to the point. I want to get straight to the point because I don't just I know how they think. Go ahead. Come on. Come on, IT. I know I dropped it on you late. I right, read that. These facts have a peculiar significance. When the presence of Judaism among American Negroes is to be considered. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of slaves were brought to America from this Western Africa during the days of the traffic. That ain't what I posted. Read it, but that ain't what I posted. <laughs> the last one, I, the last picture I posted, brother. Come be on, y'all. Go ahead, keep reading. Yeah. Yes, sir. Beginning nearly 400 years ago, uh -huh. how much more of Judaism survived amongst West African Negroes in that earlier time? So it was Judaism on the West Coast of Africa. I got another book called uh, Hebrewisms of West Africa, showing that all throughout West Africa, they were practicing Judaism and speaking Hebrew. Okay, go ahead. As persecuted communities, they were rather more in danger than any other Negroes of being raided by war parties and sold as slaves. Sold as slaves. Go ahead. It may be considered certain that many partially Judaized Negroes were among the slaves brought to America. So partially Judaized Negroes were among the slaves brought to America. Go ahead. How many of them might still hold some Jewish customs in their new home is another question. Absolutely. Go to the next part. On the Cab Cabinda Coast in Portuguese West Africa is an interesting group of Negro Jews. Interesting group of Negro Jews. Go ahead. Known as Mavumba. Go ahead. They are skillful smiths and potters and consequently prosper. Read. Ratzel considers them connected with a colony of Jews expelled from Portugal and settled on St. Tomé Island. That's exactly what we, all the scholars know the history. That's it's right. It's the same history, man. Same history. You understand? Go to the next page real quick. The last page I posted. Yep, that's it right there. Jewish ancestry. 
No, go to his grandfather was one of the, at the top. His grandfather, let me see. Just read it. Okay. His grandfather was one of the blackest Jews of Nigeria. The black Jew, one of the black, black Jews, Jews of, of Nigeria. Nigeria. All right, go ahead to the next part. Thus, Bishop Matthew claims an immemorial Jewish ancestry. Uh-huh. But since that ancestry is Negro, uh-huh. it follows that Negroes were the original Jews. What? Drop the bomb, please. It follows that Negroes were the original Jews. So what you saw in the book of Clarence is biblically accurate. Go ahead. This is a development from Bishop Matthew's congregation. Go ahead. It has received no help from the white Jews. Go ahead. And observes that the white Jewish paper calls them fakers. Uh Uh-huh. But my friends, we are not fakers. We ain't fakers. Every black man is a real Hebrew. That's right. Whether he knows it or not. Whether you know it or not or want to accept it or not or want to have your, your head up the white man's rectum. You understand what Bishop said? I, Bishop, I, was, I said, I just, I just, you know, I turkey it back on what the Bishop said. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bishop Yawasa. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, look, the real Hebrews are black. That's right. That's right. The black man is a real Hebrew whether you know it or not. We ain't done. I'm running over just a little bit. Have mercy. Go to the next, go to the next, uh, go to the imagery real quick. So this imagery is what they want to see us as. They don't want to see us in the position of authority, in the position of power as being the Jews, the Israelites, the apostles, Christ, Solomon. They don't want to see it. They want to see us like this. Show all these pictures. I had, I said, get all these pictures. This is what they want to see. They want us as slaves, y'all. They want us out in the field with, getting whipped across our back. Go to the next one. Go to all these pictures that are like this. This is how they want us. Docile. Weak, in the slave cotton fields, you understand? Mind destroyed, psychologically destroyed. That's how they want us. Go ahead. In servitude. Look, that's how they want us. Go ahead. Go ahead. Then we start standing up like this. Our forefathers start to stand up. Go ahead. Look, that's how they want the black man right there. That's how they want this. Oh, my God. He's saying he's a God. That's the five or six. That's five percent. No, that's Jesus. Jesus said we was gods. You understand? We ain't the most high God, obviously. We have a father, but we are gods. The Israelites are gods. Go ahead. That's how they want you. That's how they want you. Chained around your neck. In servitude. Go ahead. Look at that. These are the only image. This is the only imagery that is, is acceptable. They show slave movie after slave movie after slave movie after slave movie after slave movie. And nobody got a problem. They love it. They watch it. They research it. Remember when we was in Jackson, Mississippi? Maybe it'd be more Edomites and Moabites at the Civil Rights Museum than black folks. They're, our people are not interested in our history. The white man more interested in seeing us like they look. They want us uh, like this. Bottom of the ship. Go ahead. This is the only thing that's acceptable right here. Or every once in a while, us helping out in the Civil War. This is how they want us. Look at slave master in the background. Get ready to rape our woman. Go ahead. That's, that's, this is the only way they want to see us. They want to see us as slaves and nothing more. Watch this. Give me Haman real quick. That's the three and four real quick. I'm going to show you something. Purim coming up soon. Esther 3 and 4 right quick. The book of Esther, chapter 3 and verse Start at 2. Verse 2. The book of Esther 3 and verse 2. Go ahead. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. See, we don't bow to the so-called white man. And that angers them. Our brothers will do it that are in the Christian church. You understand? We not doing it. We don't want their fame. We don't want their millions. We don't want none of that. We the prophets. We know what we got to go through to get king, to get the kingdom of heaven. So y'all doing that. We ain't. And they don't like it. They do not like it. Keep reading. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, why transgressest thou the king's commandment? You're going to get us killed, not bowing down to that good old white man. Same spirit. Go ahead. Hey. Now when it came to pass, when they spake daily unto them, and he hearkened not unto them. Man, they, every day they were like, come on, man, you got to bow today, man. It ain't going to be good for us if you don't bow today. Mordecai said, to hell with that. I ain't bowing no Edomite. Go ahead. 
that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai, his matters would stand. You hear that? They went and told the white man, hey, he said he ain't going to bother you. <laughs> yeah, he told us, boss, he wasn't going to bother you. You didn't see this? That's black folks today. Go ahead. For he had told them that he was a Jew. He told them he was a Jew. And when he told them he was a Jew, they said, oh, this nigga think he's going to get away with it. Okay. All right. Let's see if he really about what he's talking about. Go ahead. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Then was Haman full of wrath. They hate it when we stand up like that. That's they hate right. it. They want to see us only in that particular uh, docile position as a slave, as a servant. Right. Now go to the next batch of pictures. Go to the next. Leave the slave pictures alone. Move on to the next batch. This is what they don't want. They don't want that. Right. Because you start seeing yourself in the Bible, start seeing yourself as that. Now you a problem. Now you a threat. Now, hey, give me uh, 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 1 Kings 10 and 5 right quick. Keep that picture on the screen real quick. 1 Kings 10 verse 5. This is what they don't want to see. Let's go. The book of 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 5. Go ahead. And the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. Read. There was no more spirit in her. There was no more spirit in Queen Sheba. Queen Sheba was a queen. She was rich. She had wealth beyond measure. Right. It's hard to impress somebody that got that much money. They got that much wealth and power and status. But when she seen our forefather, King Solomon, it said it wasn't no more spirit in her. You understand what that means? She was done. Uh -huh. You understand? Ain't no way. That's he, right. Go ahead. Watch the key read what it say. Verse 6. And he said, and she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. She said it's true. Everything they said about you is true. Go ahead. How be it? I believe not the words. I, did, I didn't believe them. Go ahead. Until I came and mine eyes had seen it. Read. And behold, the half was not told and me. And they didn't tell me half of this. Just, man, put yourself there. Invasion, put yourself there. That's right. King Solomon kingdom was on another level. Right. Far, be, far beyond anything that you've seen this Edomite do or any of these nations. That's royalty. That's in us, y'all. This is in us. What we read right here, it's still in us. That's right. We just got to get back to the source, which is our God. Read again. But how be it, I believe not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it. Go to the next images. Go ahead. While and behold, reading. the half was not told me. Read. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. Go ahead. Happy are thy men. Happy are thy men. Go ahead. Happy are these thy servants which stand continually Ooh, before yeah, thee. Yeah, right there. And that hear thy wisdom. This is this what they don't want to see. That's you, right. You are a threat like this, brothers. And this is who we are. And we're going to get back to this. You're going to learn today. We coming back. You understand what I'm saying? We coming back. Go ahead. Hey, let me get Isaiah 13 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's some fire right there. That's fire, man. Keep that on the, the, screen. Book of Isaiah, chapter, the book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and verse 12. Uh -huh. I will make a man more precious than fine you gold. You see that the most high said he going to make a man more precious than fine gold. That's Come right. On. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So we going to be so precious, man. I'm telling we going to be, listen, we going to be so decked out. When we get the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And these heathens don't want to see us rise up again. But guess what, brothers and sisters? We will receive our glory once again. Right. 100%. Hey, give me uh, Isaiah chapter 61. You know what I want. Or maybe you don't. Give me Let's Isaiah. Let's go. <laughs> Matter of fact, give me uh, Exodus 19 and 6. So this is what they're afraid of. This is why they say it starts with you showing them that Jesus is black. That's right. It starts with you showing them the Israelites were black in Jerusalem. I have to try to tear that movie down. Hey. I have to call it blasphemous because the person that directed it. I have to completely overlook the fact that it's showing true biblical imagery and that the Bible and historical facts show this. Go ahead. 
The book of Exodus 19 and 6. Read. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Go ahead. And holy nation. A holy nation. Go ahead. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. These are the words which ye shall speak unto the children of Israel. This is us right here. That's what we're going to be. Give me Psalms 110 and 3. That's what we're going to be right here. You may not be able to see it, but we see it. Right. We read this Bible. We believe it. Psalms 110 and 3. The book of Psalms chapter 110 and verse 3. Go ahead. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. When we get our power, ain't going to be no lip. Everybody going to fall in line. Our That's sisters right. is not going to be talking back. She ain't going to be rolling her neck. Right. She ain't going to be talking about what's in our bank account right. or that car we got repossessed. No, she ain't talking about none of that. She right. going to be saying, protect me, king. Protect me, my lord. You understand what I'm saying? She going to fall in line. She ain't talking no crap to none of us. You understand That's that? That's right. Right? All seven of them. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> get mad now. Go ahead. Go to <laughs> Go to the next image for me. It was another one I had I like. The, ne the next one. Yes, yes. This is when we go into that God mode. You understand? This is when the God mode is activated. So the first thing we showed you, we showed you the resurrection. You know what I'm saying? You're going to thousand year reign with Christ, and we're going to be back in royalty. Then we're going to go into the God mode. We're going to be immortal with Christ. Don't get me wrong. But we're going we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna to we're gonna have a vile body no more. You know what I'm saying? Give me that real quick. I vow by the bishop brought out this week. Philippians 3. But Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21. Go to the new, you can keep going to the uh, different pictures. Who shall change? Oh, go ahead. Who shall change our vile body? Read. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Mm. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So it says he going to turn our vile body to be in the image of his glorious body. That's immortality. You understand that? We are no longer going to be regular men. Remember we read in Psalms 82 and 6 that you are God, but you die like men because I sin. And this day we're not going to be regular men no more. Hey. You understand? And this is what they're afraid of. I would be afraid of this too. All the stuff we did to keep y'all down, and y'all waking up and still confident that y'all God's people, Dang. and can explain it in the scriptures? Oh, hell no. We got to get rid of you. Yeah, you are you a hate group. Number three hate group in the world, or in the country. It's number two hate group in the country. Look at that. Damn, that thing fire, bro. Oh, he got his eye, he got his, his sight set on, on Babylon. Oh, that's cold right there. That's America, ain't it? Damn, that's cold right there. I'll pray to the most high. First John 3 and 1, we close, close it out here. Bring it out. Keep going. You got, I know we got more images than that. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Read. That we should be called the sons of God. Read. Therefore the world knoweth us not, mm -hmm. because it knew him not. Go ahead. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. It don't yet appear that we the sons of God because we are in this weak flesh right now, this vile body right now. Many of us have done evil in this body. We sick. We broke hey. down. You understand? We go to work for the so-called white man, work long hours, tired as hell. You understand? Get treated bad, get spit on. So everybody like, man, these ain't the sons of God. Damn. It don't appear. Go ahead. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. He going to take this vile body away from us, and he going to give us that spiritual, angelic, immortal body, brothers and sisters. That's right. We're going to go in God mode. You understand that? You finish that out? No, sir. Go ahead. For we shall see him as he is. We are going to see Christ as he is, like he showed the apostles. The apostles saw him as he was. When he was transfigured before them, we're going to be transfigured too. Just like Elijah was transfigured. Damn, that's a cold, that's a cold image right there, boy. We're going to God mode, man. I'm telling you, it's that's a wrap for right. these nations. And that's the reason that they're hating on the book of Clarence right now. You're going to learn today. To stop this type of imagery from being pushed into the world and for our people to understand. It. What? Okay? So, hey, pull up our credentials real quick, y'all. Hope y'all got some of the lesson today. I'll pray to the Lord. Pull that up for me.
To help our people further escape the plantation, you can send donations to Israel United in Christ or via PayPal at iuic.rally.nc at israelunite.org. All praise to the most high. So help us, y'all. Help us, help us, help us. If you're able. Go ahead. Hey, Shalom, we're seeking your assistance on our national broadcast. Hey, take out your phones and scan the QR code by and answer those five brief questions. We got our uh, social media handle. There you go. Hey, Escaping the Plantation 2.0. If you enjoyed today's show and you want to see more content, follow us on all of our social media platforms, y'all. X, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. That it? There you go. Hey, how you I see Riley? You can reach us at 855-484-482. <laughs> Four two and that extension seventy ninety eight. That man a DJ. That man's an A. <laughs> or you can email us once again at iuic dot riley dot riley nc at israelunite dot org. Or you can scan the QR code below uh, and find a school near you. All praise to the Most High. Hey, I want to make sure I clear something up. I was not saying that the thousand year reign we're not going to be angel- have angelic bodies. I don't hope nobody say that. I was just. Making the imagery shows God mode. First, we showed you just us being in rulership. Then we showed you how we gonna go to God mode. So I just want to make sure that nobody is saying that. I tell you, bringing up a doctrine. You know how people live. He said something different from the bishop. No, I did not. We are going to be immortal during a thousand year reign, and we're gonna be immortal when Christ come back. We ain't hey. dying no more. We're gonna be more. We're gonna be immortal after the thousand year reign. We throw everybody in the lake of fire that was wicked as hell. Okay, so let's make it sure. I'll pray to the most high. So, hey, brothers and sisters, I hope y'all got something from the lesson today or the show today. We're going to end the psychological warfare. We're going to move on to something else next week. All right, so that's done. That series is finished. And the Book of Clarence. All right, so with that being said, I'm your host, Captain Get Light. To my left. Officer Nahum. To my right. Officer Michelle. To my far right. Officer Menahem. And to my far left. Officer John. And with that, that's another edition of Escaping the Plantation 2.0. Shalom. <laughs> Get him. Only the visual. This moment is pivotal. Clear like a digital. Phonies can't copy original. We the first on the earth in the physical. You still in our image is criminal. All your hatred is known and it's visible. We breaking the mold of traditional. You Negroes are mythical. More like a biblical miracle. Bringing the fire, the smiths of the trade. Crafting the image they try to evade. We spray from the bottom, the roots of the brave. Fruits of the tree, we ain't throwing no shade. Our brothers are dying, ain't no use in lying. The damage is seen on the news coverage. The reason we sleep and ignoring the horror, cause we don't see God when we see each other. Righteous are gathering, learning the truth, and they pissed off and won't let it go. No time for the flattering, empty words. We just plant the seed and we let it grow. Man, I light them up like it's Petro. You ain't Got insurance or a gecko I don't think they hear me, there's an echo They ain't Israel, must be Greco Eat them whole race on the decline We were built different like we divine Once you get this knowledge, ain't no rewind God's artwork, peep the design Check the masterpiece, the prophecy done got Everybody back in the building Witness the army of God Ten toes down, Trump is up to the ceiling Killing Boom, bust through the door They tried to lock it, but I got the keys Can't keep it 